Hello friends. Welcome to our channel The Fanfic Club. So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the power of Omni-Man. And before we start, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Now let's begin. Nolan Grayson stared at the blonde floating baby with a raised eyebrow. Is he yours? From the side Cecil asked. Yep, Nolan nonchalantly stated. His gloved hands gently caught the baby before it could float away. Congratulations, I guess. Cecil said as he rubbed the back of his head. When are you going to tell Debbie? Tell her what? Nolan asked as he felt his son grab one his thumbs. I don't know about Viltrum women but Earth women are not to be lied to. If you don't tell her it'll come back to bite you. Plus you two are engaged. You owe her. Cecil said before turning to his second in command. Donald, bring the aunt and uncle in. Yes sir. Donald said as he left the room. How did you find him? Nolan asked as he turned to his friend. A lot of women have claimed to have your children. Of course I looked at them and it was all a lie. Except this time the baby floated, though his mother didn't make it sadly. Cecil said with a frown. She did however live long enough to name him. Naruto is the name she gave him. Nolan frowned at that. And here I was hoping to give him a strong Viltrum name, he said. You owe her, I guess I do. Nolan said as he looked at the baby. It takes a while for our powers to kick in but a few minutes in and he's already floating. A prodigy. The doctors say those whisker marks on his cheeks are birthmarks. So other than that he's healthy. Cecil said just as Donald walked in with two other people. Mr. and Mrs. Franklin, my condolences for your loss. T thank you, Mrs. Franklin said nervously. My dear sister will be missed. As per our agreement, you will keep the kid and in exchange you will be paid. Cecil said as the Franklins nodded. And I don't have to remind you who his father is, Cecil warned as the couple turned to Omni Man who was looking at them. Treat him like he was your own. Now, as part of our agreement, you will keep quiet on the fact that Omni Man is the father, lest his enemies track you down. The couple nodded once more. Good, now let's leave the father and son to their bonding, Cecil said before guesting at the door. The couple quickly walked with the two men following after. This is bullshit. Jake Franklin growled as he kicked the coffee table away. How do they expect us to keep this little freak? Honey keep your voice down, his wife Hina calmly said as she seat down. In her arms was the sleeping Naruto wrapped in soft blankets. Or what? The little freak will wake up, Jake said as he rolled his eyes. No but the little freak's father might hear you, Hina said in a hushed whisper. W wait Omniman doesn't have super hearing, right? Jake asked as he looked around nervously. Suddenly his phone vibrated, making the poor man jump. He quickly checked his phone before his eyes widened. What's wrong? Hina asked with a raised eyebrow. T they just sent half a billion dollars into our account, Jake said with wide eyes. We're set. We're set for life. H half a billion. Hina choked. Hina, W what are the chances they send us money after my rant? Omniman slowly floated away from the house. His son was in good hands it seemed. Now the only thing left was for him to tell Debbie. Though he made sure to fly slow and stop every single crime he came across. Eleven years later, Ra. Naruto roared as he punched at his father. Said father had his arms folded, eyes closed and dodged his attacks. The two were currently floating about a thousand feet above the ground. Naruto went in for a kick before Omniman grabbed his leg and threw him to the ground. Naruto tried to stop himself mid-air only for Omniman to punch him the stomach, sending him to ground at fast speeds. The kid hit the desert floor hard, sending sand flying everywhere. Aminman slowly floated next to the crater as he watched his son get up and try to attack. Enough boy, Omniman said as Naruto stopped mid-punch. Enough training for today. Why yes sir, Naruto said as he floated back. I want you to cross this entire desert on foot. Omniman said as he stared at his son. If you decide to cheat and fly you will be punished, do you understand? Ah why yes sir, Naruto said as he gulped. Good, Omniman said before flying off, leaving a sonic boom behind him. As soon as his father left Naruto fell to ground on his knees, the boy clutched his stomach before he spit out a glob of blood. His father did not pull his punches, wiping his mouth, the boy slowly got to his feet and began walking. He had a desert to conquer. Fives later, F father, I wanted to tell you something, a nervous Naruto said to his father. What is it? Omni man asked with a raised eyebrow. Usually the boy never talked, only listened. 
It's it's my birthday today, the boy said as his father rubbed his chin. So it seems, Omni Man said as he looked thoughtful. Did he forget? Yes, yes he did. Did he care? No, no he did not. But he did feel bad considering he had gotten Mark the Rock from Pluto he asked for. Also comic books, those damn things were really expensive. He should probably ask what the boy wanted but then he didn't want the kid to grow a big head. Land a single punch in our fight and I'll give you a present. Yes sir, Naruto said as he got into a stance. The two were currently having a training session at the North Pole. Nolan saw the determination in his son's eyes and actually smiled. The two Viltrumites quickly rushed at each with Naruto on the offensive. The blonde teen threw punches as fast as he could while his father just dodged calmly. While he fought, Naruto didn't notice his eye color change but Nolan did. There's no way he has that. Nolan thought as he looked at the red almost glowing eyes. Maybe if I push him had enough. Naruto who was on the offensive was suddenly punched at the side of the head and sent flying back. You're gonna have to do better than that boy. Omni Man said he flew at the boy. He grabbed him by the throat and proceeded to dive right through the ice and straight into the cold water of the ocean. Under the ocean, Naruto struggled with all his might which resulted in Omni Man using both hands to choke home. The boy threw solid punches to Omni Man's face but the older Viltrumite powered through them. Naruto's face seemed to morph from fear of dying to rage, pure red hot rage. Naruto's eyes glowed brighter in the dark deep depths of the ocean before two beams of pure red energy were fired from them, slammed into Omni Man's face and sent him flying off the blonde. Omni Man stopped mid air as he rubbed his face. That. That actually hurt. His face was bruised badly and he had a bloody nose. His son had heat vision. Very few Viltrumites are born with that particular power, more like one in every generation. Naruto burst out of the water before attacking the floating Omni Man. A punch to the older Viltrumite's face made him stagger back before Naruto punched him in the stomach, making him gasp in pain. The blonde then followed up with an uppercut that sent Omni Man flying. He's gotten stronger, he thought as he stopped himself from flying into outer space. As Naruto flew at him, Nolan smiled. He was proud of his son. Just as his son attacked, Omni Man caught the punch. He then punched his son right in the nose, breaking it. Disoriented, Naruto could do nothing about the next barrage of punches. Once he was done Omni Man threw Naruto so hard and so far he hit the side of a mountain. Naruto lost consciousness as soon as his back hit the side of a damn mountain. Omni Man landed next to the side of the mountain about pick the boy when said boy suddenly woke up. With a groan, Naruto stood to his feet and was about to attack when Omni Man raised his hand. Usually he had to carry the boy to his aunt's place but now, it just showed how strong Naruto has become. Enough, he said before he took off his red cape. Here, happy birthday. Naruto received the cape with wide eyes. With that Omni Man flew off, leaving his son in tears. Naruto stared at the red piece of cloth with wide eyes. This. This was the first gift his father has ever given him. Fifteen years the man hadn't given him a single gift, but now he earned it. From this day onward Naruto promised to train ten times harder if this was the only way to get his father's acknowledgement. With that Naruto flew home. Madam, his home. One of the maids said as Hina stood up from her chair. Over the years things had changed for the Franklins. Every few years they'd be sent money, so much money they didn't know what to do with. Family and friends began asking questions and since they couldn't answer they decided to invest in some companies. Funny enough, those companies hit big and they made even more money. Soon they bought more companies and bought a mansion in Beverly Hills. Tell him I'll be in his room, she said as the maid nodded. Most of the maids knew Naruto had superpowers but they didn't know who his father was. Also bring the first aid kit up there. At first she let the maids patch him up but when she caught one trying to steal a blood sample she banned them all from entering his room. Hina was okay with them fucking him but not stealing blood samples and the like. So she was the one who washed his clothes, if they came back in one piece that is. Hina went up to Naruto's room. The room was huge with a large king-sized bed, a large flat screen TV and few video games both old and new. There were a bunch of comic books neatly stacked on a shelf alongside his school books. She went straight to the bathroom and began filling up the bathtub with hot water. Hina, she heard Naruto call as he entered the bedroom. Over here, she answered as Naruto quickly entered. Huh, a broken nose only? He must have gone easy. 
I hope not, Naruto chuckled as he took off his ruined shirt and pants. I'm tired. Oh poor Naru, Hina smirked. Too tired to get it up for me? Even I lost both arms I'd still fuck you sexy ass, Naruto said with a grin as he walked to her. Honestly Hina didn't know when this happened but one time she found out Jake was cheating on her so she got blackout drunk and when she woke up she had her nephew's huge tool in her asshole. And that was how it started. Is that so? Well come here you sexy boy. Hina grinned as Naruto wrapped his hand around her waist and brought her in for a kiss. A few hours later the whole family was seated together at the dinner table. So how was school, Akane? Naruto asked as he ate. It was fine now, leave me alone, Akane huffed as she rolled her eyes. Akane Franklin was the 14-year-old daughter of Hina and Jake. She has short black hair with a purple strip. Don't be rude to your cousin Akane, Hina said as she ate gracefully. Whatever, Akane muttered before she pulled out her phone and began using it. Young lady, get off your phone now, Hina said but was promptly ignored. Jake. Please tell your daughter to get off her phone. Just leave the girl alone, the husband grumbled. Now the life of riches had changed the Franklins, Hina looked and dressed like a high class MILF, while Jake had grown overweight and dressed in tracksuits. Akane, Naruto said sternly, making everyone at the table jump. Get off your phone and eat your food. Why, yes, sir. Akane instantly put the phone down and began eating her food. So, Naruto, how was your day today? Hina asked with a smile. It was great, I discovered a new superpower. Naruto said as he ate. His plate had a lot more food than everyone else on account of his body burning through food fast. Heat vision, Naruto's eyes glowed red for a moment. That's so cool. Akane exclaimed excitedly. Huh so that's what that is, Hina said as she looked thoughtful. Your eyes usually glowed red whenever you were angry or focused. Huh, Naruto said before shrugging. Can you show me? Akane asked as her cousin smiled. As soon as we eat, Naruto said before laughing at Akane who began speed running dinner. I'm home, Nolan Grayson said as he entered his house. Honey food's ready, his wife Debbie called from the dinner table. Good cause I'm starving, Nolan said as he entered the dining room. Hey da holy shit you look like crap, his son Mark Grayson exclaimed only to get slapped upside the head by his mother. Language she said with glare. S sorry, Mark grumbled as he rubbed the back of his head. Dad, what villain beat you up like that? The 14-year-old boy asked with excited eyes. And why are you smiling like that? Debbie added as she put food on the table. Actually your brother did this Mark, Nolan said with a proud smile. He's gotten stronger and he now has heat vision, a real Viltrumite prodigy. Oh oh, Mark muttered sadly. I'm not hungry anymore. The 14-year-old quickly got up and ran up to his room. Debbie turned to glare at her husband who looked confused. Was it something I said? Nolan asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, the fact that you brought up him. Debbie said. You know how Mark feels about that issue. The fact that he has a human brother has powers while he doesn't. You praising him in front of Mark is insensitive. What? Omni-man asked, his voice deathly calm. I'm being insensitive. Me being proud of my eldest son is being insensitive. Let's not forget which one of the two I favor. If it was up to me Naruto would have lived with us but you didn't want that and I respected your wishes. I. I'm just saying, Mark is upset at himself for not being like you. Debbie said as she sat down with tears in her eyes. Mark is upset he doesn't have powers A eh, and it's my fault. Something is wrong with me because there is full proof that humans and Viltrumites can have children that inherit their powers. Since the problem isn't with you it's obviously me. Nolan's eyes softened as he comforted his wife. I get it but I can't keep alienating Naruto, he's part of my life and you and Mark have to accept that. Debbie sniffed and wiped her tears. You're right, it's wrong of me to ask you to abandon your other son. B but you have to talk to Mark, he needs to understand that it's not his fault he doesn't have powers. Yet, he's growing and he might be a late bloomer. Nolan said with a smile. Yeah a late bloomer. Two years later New York City was being its usual busy self when a couple of explosions rocked it. Explosions sent people running and hiding before a giant spaceship appeared in the night sky. Then a large screen hologram appeared and an ugly lizard man thing on it. GU Kacha Ka ZZZZZZT Earth Scam, we have a prisoner that escaped and is hiding among you. Do not interfere in our search or your planet will be destroyed. 
The hologram shut off before tiny ships flew out of the giant ship and began flying around New York. Beverly Hills Naruto was snoring peacefully with Hina in his arms as they slept in his room. Suddenly the blonde sat up alert with his eyes wide before the wall at the other side of the room exploded and his father walked in like the fucking cool aid man. Get up boy. OMN man said as he floated towards the bed, it's time to make your debut. Taylor shop Art Rosenbaum was watching the news, footage of an alien invasion happening in New York. The old man heard the door open before turning to see two people walking in. Nolan. Art smiled as he saw his friend. Art, Nolan replied with a smile of his own. It's been a while. That has, Art said as the two shook hands. To what do I owe the visit? I need a suit, Nolan said as Art raised an eyebrow. Yours looks fine, Art said as Nolan turned to the other person. It's actually for him, Nolan said as he gestured to the blonde young man. My son. Art narrowed his eyes before they widened. This this is him. A while back while the two were having a beer, when Nolan had offhandedly mentioned he had another son apart from the one he had with Debbie, he's grown. It's nice to meet you sir, the young man said as he stepped forward and they shook hands. My name is Naruto. Art, nice to ya. The older man said. I take it you plan on fighting in that alien invasion? Wait wa. He does and he needs something fast, Nolan answered as Art looked thoughtful. It'll take a few hours to make a new one from scratch, Art said as he scratched his head. Anything bulletproof and tear resistant will do for now, Nolan said as Art shook his head no. I'm all out, a bunch of new supers popping up every day, Art said with a sigh. What about my old uniform? Nolan asked as Art frowned. The kid's tall but it won't fit, Art said as he folded his hands, but I can adjust it. How long will that take? Ten minutes, Art answered as Nolan nodded. Good, and add in some light armor while you're at it. Nolan said as Art nodded. And now it's 15 minutes, Art muttered. Feel free to move around while I work. As soon as Art left Naruto quickly rushed to the TV and turned up the volume. As of right now aliens haven't attacked but people in the nearby areas are being evacuated by government AGA nets. Everyone is getting restless but thankfully the Guardians of the Globe are on standby. The footage cut from the beautiful redhead reporter to the Guardians. We can only hope the aliens find their prisoners and leave us in peace. No they won't, Nolan said as stood next to Naruto. The Gordanians are a bunch of backstabbing savages who go back on their word more often than not. And what does this have to do with me? Naruto asked as his father smiled at him. You're going to fight them, alone. Nolan said as he put a hand on his son's shoulder. It's time to take the next step to becoming a Viltrumite. I won't fail you father, Naruto said in a determined voice. I know you won't, Nolan said with a smile. Have they tried anything yet? Cecil asked as his second in command shook his head. Not yet sir but they seem to be rampaging through buildings, they're getting restless. Donald said as Cecil turned to the guardians. I have a hunch this will end in a fight, Cecil said. We're ready, War Woman said as the others behind her agreed. That won't be necessary, the voice of Omni-Man came as he flew in, with someone else following behind him. Omni Man, Cecil greeted as the Viltrumites landed. Wait, is that? Cecil knew Mark Grayson didn't have powers, so this could only be. It is, Omni Man answered with a smile. Omni Man, what did you mean by, not necessary? The immortal said as he stepped up to the Viltrumites. Cecil, I wanted to ask a favor regarding the Gordonanes, Omni Man said, completely ignoring the immortal. So that's what they're called, Cecil mumbled. What is it? The Gordanians are going to betray you and when they do I want him to fight them. Omni-Man said as Cecil raised an eyebrow. What? He's just a kid. The immortal yelled out but was ignored again. It's a Viltrumite rite of passage, Omni-Man explains. This will help him break through his ceiling and get stronger. But to fight an entire army, Cecil said before turning to Naruto. Kid, you want to do tea. I'm ready. I can do this. Naruto stated. Cecil looked over the kid with a frown. He was dressed in a white full body costume with gray splashed around, he had some cloth wrapped around his waist and light gray boots. This was the same outfit Nolan wore when he first came to Earth. Though it had some additions, like silver colored light armor added to the shins, chest and gauntlets. The kid looked ready for battle. Though Cecil was confused by the now black hair and lack of birthmarks on his face. 
Naruto looked like a young version of his father way too much. Fine. Hopefully my gut is wrong on this one, Cecil said much to the shock of the Guardians. Wait you can be serious Cecil, War Woman yelled, he's just a kid. Sir something's happening. Donald called as they all turned to the large screen in the room. 2CA Cha Ka Z Z Z Z Z T Tamaranian Scam. Show yourself this instant or else we will destroy this planet and all its precious innocence. What kind of prisoner would agree to that kind of ultimatum? Naruto asked as he looked at his father. Tamaranian are usually non violent. Maybe this one is the exception. Omni Man stated as Naruto looked thoughtful. You have two minutes to comply or we blow up this filthy rock those animals call home. Now that's just cruel, Omni Man said with a chuckle. I think I know what to do, Naruto said as everyone turned to him. You think? I, I know, sir, Naruto said as he turned to Cecil. Can you evacuate everyone in the nearby area? I can, why? Cecil asked. I need to find the prisoner they want and talk to them. Find out what's really going on, Naruto said as Cecil stared at him for a moment. If this goes tits up, I take full responsibility, Naruto said in a determined voice. What responsibility he's a kid? The immortal growled out. You're putting the lives of thousands in the hands of a child. Relax, you're evacuating the area, Omni Man said nonchalantly, making the immortal growl. Okay I'm going, Naruto said before turning to his father. Any advice, sir? Beat the bad guys and kiss the girl. Omni Man said with a shrug. Then his eyes narrow and a sinister aura surrounds him. Show no mercy son. Yes father, Naruto nodded before flying off, bursting through the ceiling as he did. Great, I have to pay for that. Cecil muttered as he stared up at the hole in the ceiling. I hope the kid can do it. He can, Omni Man said with a nod. Wait, Omni Man has a son. Red Rush yelled in shock. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Naruto muttered over and over again as he floated towards the Gordanian ship. Naruto would have preferred to wait a bit longer to be a hero, maybe after he turned 18. But his father wanted him to do it now, he didn't even get to design his own logo or even costume. The suit he wore now was his dad's old one, the one he used when he first came to Earth. It was pure white and light gray, colors that were a bit too bright in Naruto's opinion. Also the logo on the chest was circular with three horizontal lines inside it. What did that even mean? Also he had on some shoulder pads, shin pads and gauntlets. So that was pretty neat. The one thing he had a say in was hiding his identity. Since Art didn't have any masks on hand but what he did have was a little holographic projector. It came in the form of a tiny device that you stuck behind your ear. The thing changed his hair color to black and his whiskers. That was it. Naruto looked around and noticed the entire street was empty, except for the Gordanians that were running and making a mess. The damn things looked like animals with the mess they were leaving. Though they did stop their searching in favor of looking up at him. The Gordanians began flying up at him and Naruto finally got a good look at them. Ugly humanoid creatures, red glowing eyes, green scales covering their entire bodies, a large tail and find at the back of the arms and spin. The front of their torsos had an exoskeleton like covering probably to protect their weapons, some had blasters while others held tridents. A few of them had wing-like jetpacks that they used to fly about. The ones with jetpacks had now surrounded Naruto as they growled and grunted at him. Suddenly one of the lizards pulled out a circular device and pointed at Naruto. The blonde instantly went on guard, eyes glowing red. The holographic projection shot out and the leader lizard appeared. Zuka Chaka ZZZZZZT Viltrumite General. The alien raised a brow at that but did comment on it. I am General Trohar, the Gordanians wish not to intrude on your post, we did not know you were on the planet when we landed. Alright Naruto, dig down and use your Viltrumite voice, Naruto mentally prepared himself. The Tamaranian prisoner, Naruto demanded, tell me about them. You have no need to concern yourself with that. Trohar said quickly, she is a high profile target that is very dangerous. She. Naruto thought. It does concern me when you threaten to blow up my planet. Naruto said as he glared. Also, Tamaranians aren't none for being violent, what did this one do? Trohar paused for a moment before he spoke. She has killed hundreds of my brothers and sisters, she must pay. Fine then, you have ten minutes to find them. Naruto stated. Trohar wanted to speak but the blonde continued. 
I'll also be assisting you in your search, the sooner we can get this done the better. With that said Naruto turned and floated away without bothering to look back. Naruto floated around the empty streets, calmly looking around. What exactly is your plan kid? Naruto had floating metal orbs around him as he moved. They acted as both cameras and speakers with Cecil's voice coming through. I'm waiting for the prisoner to make contact, Naruto said. If she's smart she'll make contact. I'm her only hope after all. It's been ten minutes kid, I don't think she'll. Found her. Naruto said as he pointed at a building. Said buildings seem to have a glare effect. Lead the way kid. Naruto nodded as he silently made his way towards the building. Making sure to stealthily fly lest he be spotted by any stray Gordanians. He flew through an open window before turning to the person standing at the dark side of the room. Did you come alone, the person, a female by the voice said as she slowly stepped out of the shadows and into the light. Naruto had to take a second cause he was utterly blind-sided by what he saw. Honestly he thought it'd be some praying mantis looking thing not, what he was seeing. One word to describe her, gorgeous. She had light orange skin, long red hair and green pupil less eyes she was dressed in a full body purple suit that covered her head to toe. Though she was barefooted. The woman threw away the piece of glass she used to call him as she walked towards him. Tortuk no, she spoke in a beautiful voice. What? A confused Naruto asked just before the mystery woman moved. Naruto quickly reacted with holding up his hand and blocking her mouth from touching his. What are you doing? The female alien seemed confused at his reaction. I wanted to learn your language the fun way but this just fine, she spoke in English. What? My people can learn any language through touch but a kiss is more fun, she said. I am Coriander, a Tamaranian and the princess of Tamaran, my home world. And I'm Naruto. Naruto said before realizing he said his actual name. Crap. According to the Gordanians, you're a dangerous prisoner. M. My sister sold me as part of a peace treaty with the Gordanians. Coriander said as she looked down sadly. For three years they tortured me and made me fight in their gladiator pits. I didn't escape at first cuz I feared what the Gordanians would do to me be but I've had enough. Wah what they did to me, I don't care anymore. Naruto just stared as the beautiful alien cried. Coriander quickly wiped her tears. I'm sorry for causing trouble but please help me. You're a high-ranking Viltrumite we can take them together. I guess I know what this symbol on my chest means. Suddenly there was flash of blue at the other end of the room. Coriander had already moved, with Naruto following her. Cecil just stared at the fist a few centimeters away from his face with a raised eyebrow. If that's how you say hello then I don't want to know what goodbye is, Cecil said. You're fast both of you. Coriander's fist didn't reach Cecil because of Naruto who had managed to hold her her by the forearm. Relax Cori, he's on our side. Naruto said as he let go of Coriander as she lowered her fist. My apologies, Coriander said as she stepped back. What now kid, you're the one leading this whole thing. Cecil said as he adjusted his tie. Do we give her up or do you fight them? You have two minutes to decide, Coriander if you would kindly step to the side for a chat. The Tamaranian nodded though she glanced worried at the blonde Viltrumite before walking away with Cecil following her behind. What exactly is a ranking Viltrumite? Cecil asked as Coriander turned to him. A few years ago, the Gordanians were attacked by a three Viltrumites. Two adult males and one girl, a child. What was weird was that the child was the only one who attacked. A little girl decimated an entire battalion of Gordanians. Unfortunately, the ship I was on just managed to get away. I heard the Gordanians say something about how one of the men was a high-ranking Viltrumite and was supposed to be stronger. I was happy that the Gordanians were being slaughtered but the fact that that child slaughtered thousands by itself and that one of the those things was even stronger scared me. Coriander with a shiver. Just imagine what they could do. Do you know why the Viltrumites attacked? Cecil asked as Coriander looked thoughtful. Yeah. Apparently it's a Viltrumite rite of passage for a youngling to decimate an entire army. Coriander said with a frown. That's, as you humans would say, fucked up. Glad we're on the same page. Cecil said before they both turned to Naruto was walking towards them. Cori there's something I have to tell you, Naruto said as he looked her in the eyes. This isn't my suit, it's my dad's. Naruto put a hand on his chest, right over the ranking symbol. My dad is the high-ranking Viltrumite and he's talked me with dealing with the Gordanians. S so this is your rite of passage? 
Coriander asked as Naruto nodded. I choose to fight the Gordanians and I understand if you won't fight with me, Naruto stated. These animals have made my life a living hell for years, it would be an honor to help you slaughter them all. Coriander growled out. Nice this rite of passage crap isn't totally crap I'll let you fight them. But if you start losing I'm dispatching the guardians. Cecil said. So good luck to both of you I guess. With that the leader of planet earth vanished. Naruto turned to Coriander who was now tearing off her clothes. What are you doing? Naruto asked as Coriander looked him. Solar energy powers me. I have to have as much exposure as I can to it for my powers to be even stronger. Coriander said. I would have preferred being nude but this will do. Damn, Naruto muttered. Like what you see. Kori teased as Naruto nodded. The Tamaranian was now in a dress in a purple bikini top and panties. I do, Naruto said before turning serious. A frontal assault or we sneak inside the ship and blow it up from there. A frontal assault would be most pleasant, Coriander said as she smirked and held up her hands that were glowing with green energy. Let's go. Naruto said before flying and bursting out of the ceiling with Coriander following suit. Hey, so how are the kids? One Gordanian asked the other as they floated in the sky. Pretty good the two boys are in their last year of school and little girl is getting married. One grunted out. Oh shit for real? That's great man. Say, when's the wedding? Two days from now, yeah I can't wait to walk her at the altar. Man I'm happy for he was interrupted by a flash of green and a loud explosion. The first Gordanian stared at his now headless friend in horror. The body is just floating headless there. No, he turned and came face to face with two floating people. The Viltrumite and Tamaranian. You bastards, he had family. A wife and three children, his little girl was getting Mari. Naruto and Coriander just stared at the Gordanian with raised eyebrows. The fuck is he saying? Naruto asked. To him it just sounded like grunts and snorts. Something about his friends having a family or whatever. Coriander said, her fist ablaze with green fire. Now he's screaming insults, oh he just called your mother a whore and your father is a pathetic weakling. Is that so? Naruto turned to the frantic Gordanian and fired off his heat version. The beams piercing through the lizard man's face and killing him instantly. Raw. The two turned to the savage roars of hundreds of Gordanians flying towards them. It seems we got their attention. Naruto said as he moved his head the side, dodging blast from some Gordanian fired at him. Indeed we have, Coriander said as she smirked. Vengeance will be mine. With that she flew towards the swarm of lizard-like men. Save some for me. Naruto smirked before he flew at them. As the swarm approached, he fired off his lasers. Now after practicing with his heat vision, he discovered that they could be locked onto someone and they could zigzag around if he willed it. So they just cut through the hordes of Gordanians like a hot knife through butter. He made sure to not hit Cory as he cut through the Gordanians. Some Gordanians managed to avoid the beams and make it near him. Big mistake. The young Viltrumite literally punched their heads off. It was either their heads were completely punched off or his fist just drilled a hole through the head. Naruto was giving it his all and it showed how he cut through the enemy like tissue paper. He'd gone all out like this against his father and all it did was give him a black eye and a bleeding nose. His father had somewhat gone all out and Naruto had gotten two broken arms and legs. He couldn't walk for like a day. Die you bastards. Coriander had literally ripped Trident out of some power Gordanian's grip, along with his arms, and used it to stab and tear through her opponents. In a span of a minute hundreds of Gordanian bodies fell from the sky, dead. You okay? Naruto said as he wiped the blood that had splashed on his face. Never better, Coriander replied with a grin. The two looked at each before turning to the herd of reptile aliens. Coriander held out her hands and fired her star bolts. Upon impact, the bolts burned off flesh. The screams of agony didn't seem to bother the two. In fact, Naruto's eyes glowed red before he fired his heat vision. The beams of light pierced through the skulls of the aliens. Hundreds of Gordanians fell to their death and none of them even managed to get in range of the two. A bunch of blaster-wielding Gordanians branched off to the side and fired at the two. Scatter. Naruto stated before flying to the side. Dodging the blasts with his super speed. Coriander did the same, easily blocking blasts with her trident. She's good with that thing. Naruto thought as before firing his lasers through the necks of the enemies. Battle cry. Coriander yelled before throwing the trident, 
the thing impaling three Gordanians and instantly killing them. With the long-range attackers gone, Naruto floated over to Coriander with a raised eyebrow. Did you just yell battle cry? Oh, my people have a war cry that we use but it doesn't really translate well in English. Coriander said. The battle isn't over yet, the Gordanians have a heavy hitter. A what? Naruto asked just as a loud roar rang throughout. A thing flew out of the ship, it was bigger than the average Gordanian with large bulging muscles around its body. Its left arm was made of black metal and its other arm held a large spiked mace. The thing seemed to have large wings on its back that it used to fly. The heavy hitter seemed to have scars scattered around its body, particularly the chest armor and on top of its robotic eye. Oh, Gachaka ZZZZZZZZTI have had it with you Viltrumite scam. Today is the day your kind pay for what they have done. I challenge you. Winner takes all. Trohar's ugly ass face had appeared in hologram form once more. Kill the Viltrumite. I'm afraid I can't help you on this one, Coriander said, making Naruto turn to her. The challenge is our only chance to not risk a full-scale inversion. A one-on-one -on -one fight with the winner taking all. He doesn't seem tough, Naruto muttered before flying at the heavy hitter. The thing seemed to roar before flying at him. Naruto went in for a punch before the heavy hitter caught it with its robot arm. Naruto stared at his caught fist with wide eyes before he was smacked across the face with the mace that sent him flying into a nearby building. Groaning, the young Viltrumite picked up the large slab of concrete that had fallen on him. I take it back, he's tough, Naruto grunted as he held the side of his head that was bleeding profusely. Shit. Suddenly the heavy gunner burst into the room and proceeded to step on Naruto's chest, stopping the Viltrumite from getting up. The thing then held up its mace with both hands, a cruel smirk on its. Double shit, was all Naruto said before the heavy hitter brought it down. Naruto quickly brought his arms up and blocked the attack. He could feel the spikes of the metal dig into his forearm, it hurt but it could have been worse. The heavy hitter pulled back before going for his left side. Naruto's arm blocked the blow the spikes digging into the suit and ripping it. His father's suit, with a rage-filled roar Naruto fired his heat vision. The heavy hitter shifts to the side but the twin beams turn and hit it point-blank in the chest. The force of the blast sent the thing flying off him and to the other side of the room. The Viltrumite teen quickly got to his feet, he could feel his head injury healing up. Looking at the damage done to his suit Naruto felt rage feel his body. The Viltrumite turned to the heavy hitter eyes glowing with rage before he tackled the thing with all his might and sent it through a couple of walls. The thing grunted as its back hit the ground with Naruto straddling it. Bastard. Naruto roared as he punched the Gordanian mutant in the face. Do you know what you've done? The Viltrumite rained down more punches, whatever knows the creature had was now buried inside its skull. Dark green blood splashed on his face but the rage-filled Viltrumite didn't care. He brought both hands above his head for a double-fisted punch only for a large glowing red arm cannon to be shoved in his face. What the heavy hitter fired, a ball of red energy hitting Naruto in the face and sending him flying. The Viltrumite's body broke through concrete and steel like it was wet tissue paper. Naruto's body burst out of the building and into another. The momentum slowed and Naruto's body thumped against a wall. Groaning. Naruto opened his eyes and he caught his reflection in the large glass window of the building he crushed in. His face was almost burned off, he could see the red muscles behind it as skin healed over. His Viltrumite physiology was what was helping him survive. That attack would have blown off his head if it wasn't for him being his father's son. Naruto slowly stood up, his face itched in a weird way as it healed over. He had lost his cool, and it had cost him. He needed to just take in a deep breath and calm the fuck down. The Viltrumite did so and his head cleared. Naruto gritted his teeth and clenched his fist. No more games, this ends now. The heavy hitter burst into the room and was promptly punched so hard it went flying. Naruto was a white blur as he passed it by. His head was clear and plans were flowing freely now. He needed to get the thing out of the city so he could go all out and show no mercy. The heavy hitter slowed down, but Naruto was already behind it. His hands gripped the wing like jetpack and ripped it off the thing's back. The Viltrumite watched as the heavy hitter tried to claw at him but he swiftly moved to the side and watched it fall. Naruto then flew up, his form reaching past the clouds before he shot down. The sound barrier shattered behind Naruto as he put his arms forward, hands forming into fists. Naruto saw the Gordanian's body and honed in on it. 
A literal white blur drilled into the large alien's torso like a hot knife through butter, passing through one end and coming out the other. The green-scaled alien landed with a thud on the road, its cyborg eye losing its glow. The large hole in its body was a sign that it was dead. Breathing heavily, Naruto landed on the road. He stared at the body on the ground with narrowed eyes. He needed to check for a pulse. The Viltrumite teen brought his foot forward and smashed the heavy's head with all his might, squashing it to a bloodily green pulp. You've done it, Coriander said as she floated down next to him. The win is yours. Naruto wiped his hair clean of the green blood. So what now? He asked only to see the large ship above start moving. The bottom part seemed to open and a red glow appeared. What is that? He plans to destroy your city, Coriander said as they both looked to the sky. Not on my watch. Naruto growled before shooting off the ground with Coriander following suit. What now? Cori asked as they stopped at the sight of the ship. Do we go off on their asses? Obviously, Naruto snorted before the two vanished in blurs of pure speed. Coriander power covered her entire body in green flames as she slammed into the ship. The large spacecraft seemed to shake at the impact. Naruto went on top of the ship and fired his heat vision at it. The alien metal easily melted under the intense heat of the beams with some parts bursting into flames. Coriander roared as she burst out another part of the ship. She had taken out hundreds of Gordanians with her attack their blood evaporating off her body. With a roar she dived in once more. She must have gone for the engines because the ship began falling. Naruto quickly zoomed to the bottom of it. The large cannon they were about to fire had already gone off and the hangar doors had closed. The Viltrumite quickly went to it, hands going up and gripping the metal as he flew up. There was a city down there and a big-ass spaceship crashing down on it would be pretty bad. The metal groaned as the ship's full weight fell upon him. The ship's fall came to a halt before it slowly began going up. Naruto grunted as he lifted with all his might. I'm not your property anymore. Coriander growled as she pointed a trident at the thing that had made her life a living hell. Trohar just laughed as he got off his throne. The general picked up his own trident as he walked towards the Tamaranian. Prepare to die slut. He growled as he got into a stance. Once I'm done with you I will rape your corp ah. Trohar was interrupted by a trident stabbing into his chest. We both know you can't beat me in a full-on fight, Coriander said, having thrown the spear. I know you will cheat, and I will end you before you do. With a roar, Coriander charged with her fists ablaze. Trohar tried to dodge but he was too slow. Her fist smashed against his face so hard his giant body went flying through a wall. Before he could get up, Coriander suddenly grabbed him by his collar her hand burning into his flesh and grabbing him by the collarbone. I hope you feel this, Coriander smirked, eyes glowing green with power. Lasers fired from them and his legs were swiftly cut off. Trohar screamed and tried to punch her but she caught his hand with her free hand. The general screamed as Coriander's hot grip tightened, burning through him and gripping his bones. You will suffer for what you and your kind have done to me. Her grip easily shattered the bone. Naruto raised a brow at the screams of pain coming from the ship. His attention quickly went to the stray Gordanians trying to stop him. His heat vision tore through them easily. The red beams twisting and turning to catch anyone who tried to dodge or run. Naruto powered through as the ship got heavier as he reached outer space. The screams seemed to fade to a stop. Whoever it was must have died. Few seconds later and the ship got a whole lot lighter. Naruto turned his head and spotted Coriander helping with the lifting. She was covered in blood, green blood that is. The two powerhouses carried the ship all the way to space. Once they were far away from space Naruto let go and floated back. Coriander did the same as she floated back. Naruto gave her a smirk, he would have said something but this was space. She wouldn't hear him even if he shouted. She in turn raised an eyebrow in question. Naruto answered by diving at the ship with his full speed. All Coriander could see was a white blur bursting in and out of the ship breaking off a piece as it did. Coriander's eyes widened before a green aura covered her body and flew at the ship as fast as she could. Her body slammed into it, breaking everything in her path and bursting out from above. She made sure to avoid Naruto whenever he came too close. In a few seconds the whole ship was nothing but tiny pieces floating in space. Naruto and Coriander pulled back and stared at the damage done before flying back to Earth. You did great, Cecil said as he patted Naruto on the shoulder you and your friend. Thank you sir, Naruto nodded, 
the blonde made sure to remain stoic, though inside he was happy at the praise. It was the least I can do, Coriander said as she turned to Naruto. I wish to make your world my own now, as it was my people my who sold me into slavery. I have no home to go to. Well we already took in one alien, might as well. Cecil sighed, as Omniman approached. You guys did a good job today. The world's strongest hero stood in front of his son with a frown. Good job but it was sloppy, he said before walking away. I all do better, Naruto said but his father never turned to look at him. The man just walked away. Don't sweat it kid, Cecil said with a frown, before turning Coriander. Let's get you settled in with housing and all that stuff Coriander. The man then walked away, Coriander gave Naruto a longing look before following after Cecil. I forgot to kiss the girl, Naruto said as he facepalmed, damn it. Two hours later Naruto grunted as his fist smashed against a giant iceberg. The mountain of ice shattering like glass and falling into the cold ocean. The blonde looked at his bruised fist before shaking off the slight pain. The blonde was dressed in nothing but a pair of boxers as he floated in the cold water of the Arctic Ocean. Taking in a breath, the blonde fired his lasers at another iceberg, the twin beams melting the ice into hot steam. Naruto seemed to increase the intensity as his heat vision seemed to blast everything in sight before landing into the ocean, the very water boiling. The beams slowly died down as the blonde Viltrumite breathed in heavily. He needed to do better, his body was arching and tired but Naruto won't stop. His eyes glowed red before firing off another blast. He would push himself until his father acknowledged him. After his training session, Naruto went back home. To his surprise Coriander was there, she was having dinner with the whole family. Oh Naruto, glad you could finally make it, Hina called out. Naruto wanted to head straight to his room and sleep but it seemed Hina wouldn't have that. Come join us. The blonde dragged himself to the table that already had three people. Akane, Hina and Coriander. Who knows where his uncle was but Naruto didn't care that much. The blonde pulled up a chair and took his seat. So Coriander wanted to talk to you, Hina said as she smiled at the Viltrumite. Naruto turned to Coriander who was smiling nervously at him. Unlike the last time he saw her, she was dressed in normal clothes. A light purple shirt, some blue jeans and high-heeled boots. I. I hope I'm not a bother but I wanted to talk to you. Coriander said with a nervous chuckle. I wish to thank you for saving me and to reward you for doing so. Oh you don't have to, Naruto said as he shook his head. It's what heroes do. Yes but I must insist, Coriander said as she stood to her feet. I cannot simply allow that. Just let the girl give you your prize, Hina said as she sipped her wine. I don't think she'll take no for an answer. Naruto looked at Coriander and he could see the determination in her eyes. Fine, he sighed. Ah okay then, Coriander said as she walked towards Naruto. Take me to your bedroom and I'll show you your surprise. Huh. Akane, who was eating, almost choked on her food and Hina spat out her wine. Naruto looked at Coriander who stared back at him with a blush on her face. He then looked to Hina who was wiping her mouth, the woman looked at him before shrugging. Sighing, the blonde Viltrumite stood up and gestured for Coriander to follow. The girl quickly standing up and following him. So, what exactly is this prize? Akane suddenly asked, making her mother snort in amusement. We both know what it is, the MILF said before pouring herself another drink. You seem upset, I'm perfectly fine. Naruto took a seat at the edge of his bed as Coriander floated before him. The girl seemed to have an air of nervousness about her. I I thank you for freeing me, Coriander said as she looked down. You've said that already, Naruto deadpanned. Oh yes, of course, Coriander said as she blushed. I I believe actions speak louder than words. Naruto watched as the red head calmly floated over to him, she was now a few inches away from him. What you did for me, I'm forever grateful. Coriander said as she slowly took off her shirt. Wait Coriander you don't have to, I want to, my body and soul are now yours. Coriander said as she took off her jeans and slipped out of her boots. Fully naked and exposed to him. Coriander waited for his response. Beat the bad guys, kiss the girl. He'd already beat the bad guys, now all he needed was to kiss the girl. Naruto got up, wrapped his arm around Coriander's waist and pulled her forward. Her gasp of shock was interrupted by Naruto smashing his lips against her. His hand went down to her ass and gave it a squeeze. Coriander moaned at the action, 
her hands quickly going up his shirt and gently pulling it up. Naruto pulled back from the lip lock and let her take his shirt off. She then gave him one last hungry kiss before she knelt down. Coriander then unbuckled his belt and pulled down his pants and boxers. His hard cock springs up and hits her face. Oh my. Coriander giggles as she wraps a hand around the hot rod. Is this all for me? She then begins to slowly jerk him off. Her soft hands making Naruto groan, who knew a fighter like Coriander would have such soft hands. Coriander brought the tool close to her mouth and gently let out a breath, the warm air making the cock twitch in excitement. Coriander smiled at that before pulling her head back and aiming the rod at her mouth, leaning forward and taking it in. Her tongue slowly massaged the cock head as she closed her mouth around it and began to suck. Her head bobbed back and forth as she got a few more inches in. Coriander then pulled back entirely and began to lick the cock. Her tongue runs along the length's veins as Naruto moans. Do you mind if I try something? Coriander asked as she gave his cock a kiss. Why yeah sure Cori, Naruto said as the redhead quickly got to her feet. Cori huh? I like it, she smiled. Now get on the bed. Naruto quickly kicked off his shoes and pants and jumped on the bed. Cori giggled at his eagerness as she slowly floated off the ground and above Naruto. She then turned mid-air, and slowly lowered herself down. Her head landed next to his shaft as she rubbed her beep against his mouth. Cori quickly went to sucking the cock before her while Naruto went to licking the beep before him, only to pause at the odd taste. Cori was sweet, she literally tasted sweet. Cori pulled back from her tool sucking. Naruto had paused after one lick. Maybe he didn't like how she tasted down. Her doubts were squashed when she felt Naruto grab her butt cheeks and pushed her down, his tongue going in full force and making her cry out in pleasure. Not to be outdone, Cory pulled her long tongue and wrapped it around the head of his cock, making sure to drool on it as much as she could. Naruto earnestly lapped at the sweet sweet beep, his tongue digging inside her core, touching places that hadn't been touched in a long time. Cory then began jerking Naruto off with her lizard-like tongue and that seemed to be it. Naruto's cock began to twitch and Cory quickly deep-throated it whole as his load filled her throat and went straight to her nine stomachs. Naruto groaned into her wet beep as Cory orgasmed a few seconds after him. With his load now inside her, Cory wiped her mouth and switched positions. Cory was now straddling him, she gently grabbed his still hard and sensitive tool and lined it with her beep. She then smacked it against her wet lips a bit before inserting it into her, moaning loudly as her lower lips swallowed his lower head. Naruto whose tool was still sensitive could help but groan at the tight alien beep. Oh so good. Cory hummed as she began to gently ride the blonde's cock. She leaned down a bit, one her hand on Naruto's chest and the other to play with her nipples. Naruto quickly began thrusting up, making Cory moan at the large member that seemed to fill her up. Naruto grabbed Cory by the hips and increased his pace. Normally he wouldn't go this hard with Hina, she was after all a non-powered person, but with Cory. Naruto leaned forward and met her in a kiss, honestly more like a battle of tongues really. Naruto increased his pace and Cory did the same, both of their indestructible bodies keeping up with each other. Squishing noises and moans filled the room as the two beings went at it. At this point Cory had wrapped her arms around Naruto, her nails digging into his shoulders as he penis went in and out of her. At this point Cory began hopping off her seat, pulling the tool out of her before sitting back on it with such force. The bed underneath of them seemed to implode onto itself. Though Naruto and Cory just floated and continued their fucking. Both possessing organs that allowed them to fly unaided. The two floated all the way to the ceiling, with Cory's back hitting the wooden board, Naruto's arms stretched forward and his palms touched the white ceiling. He then began to thrust into the Cory so hard and so fast she cried in pleasure. Cory's mind was clouded as her orange beep was pounded over and over. She could hardly breathe from the stimulation and completely lost their battle of tongues. Despite hers being more flexible and longer, she let Naruto suck on her tongue and abuse her mouth. Cory held on tightly to his shoulders as she bounced herself on his tool. She let out a scream as her vagina tightened on her Viltrumite lover's tool so hard he too gave one last thrust and ejaculated inside of her. The two disconnected their mouths as Cory felt the warm embrace of her lover. He was still inside of her, stopping his seed from falling out. It had been years since she was embraced like this, the warmth of Naruto making her close her eyes and sigh in peaceful bliss. Naruto gently floated downwards, just above the destroyed beds. 
He too closed his eyes, for the first time ever, he was tired from sex. Suddenly, the door burst open and Hina ran in. Just what is going on in here? The damn house is shaking. The MILF yelled, only for her to stop and stare at the sleeping couple. Damn it, now I have to replace the bed. A few days later Naruto spat out a glob of blood as he knelt to the ground. He stared wide-eyed at the white floor of the North Pole with a frown. He'd lost, he'd asked Kori to spar with him and to not hold back. To come at him like she was going to kill him. And she did, Kori came at him so hard and fast their fight left him battered and bruised. Sure Kori had a broken hand and bruises of her own but compared to his, she'd won the fight, it was crystal clear. Kori had strength, speed, skill and experience. Apparently she'd fought off those heavy gunner things on a daily basis. T teach me, Naruto said as he coughed. He slowly stood to his feet, watching Kori fix her dislocated shoulder with a loud crack and pop the female not even flinching at the brutal action. Kori simply smiled and nodded, happy to help her hero. Two years later a 17-year-old Mark Grayson stared at the latest issue of the comic book in his hands with a frown. If you don't like it then don't read it, his mom said as she set the dinner table. Also don't read comics at the dinner table. Dad said he's gonna be staying with us for a while I have to know everything I can about him, Mark said as his mom rolled her eyes. Mark, he's your brother, I'm sure you can find common ground, Debbie said, so you don't have to stalk him through a comic book. Hey, it's not stalking. I just want to know more about him, Mark defended. Truth be told he felt jealous that his brother had his own comic that was a bestseller with a good story and well-drawn art. The comic detailed most of what he's done, apparently most of the royalties went to a couple of orphanages. I've never met him in real life and I'm nervous okay? T that's my fault, Debbie sighed as she took a seat. I let my insecurities get the best of me and kept you and your brother apart for almost 17 years. Thankfully your father put his foot down and decided Naruto would spend his last year of high school with us. God I hope this goes okay, Mark said as he rubbed his shoulder in a nervous manner. Debbie put a hand on his shoulder and rubbed it soothingly. It all be fine, besides he's a superhero, she said as she grabbed the comic from him. Let's see here, the adventures of Superman. I can't believe he calls himself that, God your brother and father are full of themselves. The cover of the comic depicted Mark's brother in his superhero costume. An all black super suit with red outlines all over it. His iconic S symbol displayed proudly on his chest inside a diamond shaped shield. Mark stifled a laugh as his mother smiled. Must be the tights, he said, and the two burst out laughing. What's so funny? Debbie and Mark blinked at the sound of the door closing a second after the voice was heard. Both turned to the sight of Omniman and another figure, both covered in blue blood. Sorry about the mess we fought a bunch of subterranean mole people trying to take over the world. Nolan said with a chuckle. Anyway, guys I'd like you all to meet my son Naruto, he'll be staying with us from today onwards. Debbie and Mark turned to Naruto. The blonde was covered head to toe with blue blood as he gave a small wave. It's nice to finally meet everyone, though I wish it was under cleaner circumstances. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his neck. Told you we should have stopped by the Pacific, Nolan laughed. Yeah but you said we were having a home cooked meal. I don't like cold food, Naruto replied. So can I use your bathroom? Uh Mark. Why don't you show your brother to the bathroom? Debbie said as Mark nodded and slowly got up. Uh. The bathroom is this way, Mark said as he led the way with a dirty Naruto following. So what do you think? Nolan asked as Debbie frowned. I think you stink of mole people, she snorted. But what I think doesn't matter at this point. All I want is for him and Mark to get along. So you fought subterranean mole people? Mark asked as his brother came out of the shower. The blonde was dressed in nothing but a towel wrapped around his waist. Mark could see his brother's physique, tall and muscular with no scars on his body. It filled him with rage at the fact that he had powers and he didn't. Yep, most random shit ever. Naruto said with a chuckle. One moment we're on our way here and the next the world is being invaded by mole people. Was the fight hard? Nope. Father was there so it was over in two minutes. Plus even without our help the army would have taken care of it. Primitive mole people who can barely see in the light against well-trained soldiers with guns. Naruto snorted. Hey can you lend me some clothes? My suitcase got destroyed by the large fire-breathing tiger they had for some reason. Weird. I don't think I have any clothes that can fit you. Mark said with a frown. Sorry. It's fine, 
I can run over to the store and grab some clothes. Naruto said with a smile. I'm really excited to meet you and uh Debbie. Yeah, same here, Mark said with a nervous smile. I have a lot to ask you, if you don't mind. Of course not, let me change real quick. Naruto said as he gave a salute and vanished in a blur of speed. Mark blinked at the empty spot his brother once stood. Despite his jealousy, Mark would admit it. His brother was cool. He shook his head and quickly went downstairs. There his father and mother were seated at the dining table. So what do you guys think? His father asked as Mark sat down. Well, his mom trailed off just as the door slammed closed and Naruto appeared seated next to Mark. Sorry about that, Naruto said, he was dressed in a black shirt and some blue jeans and red Converse shoes. Took you long enough, Nolan laughed. Yeah I was half naked and the cashier kept staring, Naruto said with a chuckle. That's my boy, Nolan said. Okay family, let me officially introduce you to my son Naruto Grayson. Naruto still has a year left to complete school. I've decided he'll live with us until he goes off to college. That's great, Mark could use more friends at school, his mom said as Mark groaned in embarrassment. Moom. What? It's true, she laughed. Okay food's getting cold, his father laughed. Mark glanced at his brother and the blonde seemed to have a small smile. Let's all dig in now. Sue why did you choose the name Superman? Mark asked as Naruto washed the dishes at super speed. It was after dinner and Naruto had volunteered to wash them. Honestly, I was going for something like Kid Omniman but then something my girlfriend said made me change my mind. Naruto said as he chuckled. She said I have super everything. Super strength, super speed and apparently a super tool. Hence the name Superman. And here I thought it was the Amazons that gave you that name. Mark said in disappointment. The comic said you fought the Amazon queen and gained her respect so she bestowed you the title of the strongest man who ever lived. Technically, I'm the second strongest man and the Amazons gave me the title of super tool because of the orgy we had after beating the god of darkness Hades. Naruto said nonchalantly as Mark blinked. The what? The orgy? Oh that, I was the only male on an island of women in their pre. No, the god of darkness, when you fought the the Hades. Mark yelled, start from the beginning, I wanna hear all about how you fought the Greek god of darkness. Oh that, well war woman needed father's help but as always he dumped it on me. He has a tendency of dumping missions on me he deems not worthy. So war woman took me to her home island, the island of. Flashback the mischievous skies, I can't believe this, war woman growled out. Your father is a bastard, no offense kid. Yes offense, Naruto replied. The two were currently flying up the skies with War Woman leading the way. Besides I'm here to help, not hear you complain. My sisters called for help and all I bring for reinforcements is a literal child, War Woman said with a scowl. I'm 17, Naruto scoffed. He'd been taking shit from War Woman the whole flight here. He would gladly turn back but this was an order from his father, and he didn't want him to disappoint him. Are we there yet? War Woman said nothing at first, just staring at him. We are she said as she dived down with Naruto following her. The two came to the site of a large green island and it was on. Fire. The island is under attack. War woman flew as fast as she could with Naruto following closely. As the two got closer they could hear the sound of fighting. War woman seemed to fly so fast she left a sonic boom behind. To her surprise Naruto was still on her tail. War woman grabbed her mace as they reached the ground. And woman in armor was fighting against two skeletons in black armor and swords. She was losing badly. War woman landed behind them and swung with all her might, two skulls crushed to dust as a result. Sister Holly. Artemis. What is this? War woman or Holly asked. Why are we at war with the undead? Hades and Ares have attacked the island. The Amazon yells as she blocks an attack from behind and counters with a swipe of her sword. Where is Diana? War Woman asks as she destroys two skeletons with one strike of her mace and kicks another away. She is locked in combat with the rogue god. Artemis pointed to the sight of a black haired woman being thrown like a rag doll by a large man in dark armor. War Woman grunted before flying towards her sister. Just as the large man was about to deliver a punch, he was sent flying by two beams of red energy. Naruto glared at the war god with a frown. The large god stood to his feet with a growl. Who are you? He asked as Naruto slowly floated to the ground. 
he was standing between the war god and the black-haired woman who was looking up at him with wide eyes. The name's Superman, Naruto said with a smirk, and I order you to stand down. You, order me? Ares asked as he tilted his helmet-clad head, you are but a boy. Superman's eyes glowed red before he vanished in a blur of speed. He appeared behind Ares with a Spartan push kick to the god's lower back. The force of the kick sent him stumbling back. Cheeky brat. Ares grunted as he turned and tried to swipe at the hero but Naruto moved to the side. He tried again but the blonde dodged. Hold still boy. Ares conjured a large ball of fire and threw it at Naruto but the black-haired teen easily sidestepped. Naruto then flew at the god and delivered a Superman punch to his covered face. Ares was sent stumbling to the ground, he tried to stand but Naruto curb stomped him to the ground. Ares roared as he got up but was given an uppercut that removed his helm, revealing a handsome blonde man. I am a god, the god said as he narrowed his eyes. You are but a man. The blonde god roared as he charged at the floating teen. He threw a punch but much to his horror it was easily caught. It's super. Naruto pulled Ares in and uppercutted the god in the chin so hard he was sent flying. Naruto then vanished and appeared above Ares before punching him back to the ground. Ares tried getting up but he was grabbed by the leg. Naruto then began spinning around while having a firm grip on the leg. Ares felt his head spinning at the speeds his body was experiencing. It only got worse when he was slammed back to the ground face first. He tried getting up but Naruto quickly took to the skies before flying down legs first and delivering the mother of all stomps. Naruto's feet met the back of Ares' head, the impact crushing the god's nose and teeth. Ares roared in pain as he grabbed his face. Look at you. Naruto turned to the beautiful black-haired woman who was slowly walking towards them with a cruel smirk. The god of war Ares, reduced to nothing but a crying pig. You dare invade our home. War woman landed next to the woman as they looked down at the god with disgust. You worm. The two then proceeded to stomp him, kicking and stepping with all their might. Naruto just blinked at the sight before shrugging and joining them. The three super-powered beings then stomped and kicked the blonde god until he passed out cold. Diana, war woman said as they all stepped back, should we end him now? I'm afraid not sister, the now named Diana sighed. The gods forbid us from doing so. She then turned to Naruto with a smirk, but anyone else is fair game. Naruto smirked back as his eyes glowed red. Making sure to give it his all, the blonde was about to remove Ares's head when he was suddenly blasted away but purple black magic. Enough. This battle is yours Diana. A voice said as Ares was swallowed by the purple black magic of Hades, but the war has only begun. Naruto tried getting up but slowly felt his vision blacken and promptly fell unconscious. A few hours later, Naruto shot up from the comfortable bed he was in. Looking around and seeing the empty room he was in, the blonde sighed in relief. He then frowned as he slowly got up, he was knocked out in a fight. His father would be disappointed. War woman must have arranged this room for him when he passed out. The door opened and an orange-haired woman walked in with a frown. The queen wishes to see you now, the woman said as she glared at him. Okay. Naruto said, confused at the hostility. Follow, the woman said before turning and walking out the door. Naruto just shook his head and followed her. As they walked through the large walls, Naruto admired the paintings on the walls and architecture. Passing a few women with shields and spears. Naruto frowned at his reflection in the polished shields. His hair was blonde. He stopped and touched the back of his ear. The gadget that art gave him to hide his hair must have shorted out. Magic and technology did not mix well after all. Move or you will be moved, the woman barked at him. Of course, Naruto said, the woman seemed to stare at him before huffing and walking, with Naruto silently following. A few minutes of walking and they reached open large doors with two tall women guarding it. The orange-haired woman walked past and when it was Naruto's turn he was blocked by spears from the women, forming an X in his path. Let the man through, the woman said as she smirked. Naruto didn't really get it but nonetheless was glad to be let through. The two walked into what Naruto assumed was the royal pala. Kneel before the queen. Naruto blinked as the woman tried to leg sweep him. Her foot kept on trying to hit him behind the knee but it did nothing. Viltrumite body for the win. Artemis enough. Naruto turned to the queen who had stood from her throne. Next to her was war woman in a white toga. 
The queen was dressed the same and Naruto made sure to look her in the eye as she looked down. Those toga were extremely short and loose. So much breast was exposed you might as well just be naked. He is a guest in our home, it is thanks to him that we managed to beat Ares. Yes my queen, Artemis gritted out as she stepped back. Next to her, a dark-skinned woman just shook her head. The queen then turned to Naruto. I am Queen Diana, ruler of the Amazonians and the island of the Mischira. I welcome you to my home, but I'm afraid it isn't a warm welcome. Diana sighed. The mad gods Ares and Hades have teamed up to bring ruin to me and my women. So that really was Ares the god of war? Naruto asked, unconsciously floating a few inches off the ground. Afraid so, Warwoman said as she stepped forward with a frown, and you managed to beat him. Technically you guys stomped him so, Naruto lightly shrugged, I caught him off guard. Ares is weak and pathetic, he tried to take over the Amazonians in the days of our mother, but he failed and was locked in a cell to rot. He managed to seduce one of the guards and managed to escape. I personally took care of the traitor but before I could finish Ares off, Hades put a curse on me. Diana said as she showed Naruto her forearm. A red tattoo of a snake that seemed to be fading away. The curse weakened me and took away my powers. Thankfully our resident dark magic expat was able to help with that. The curse will fade by midnight. I know this is not your fight but would you lend me your body, fight besides me and my sisters. My queen we don't need this man to Artemis. We are at war with two high Olympian gods. Not one but two. Do you think I'm arrogant enough to take on both of them at once? Diana roared as she glared. Nubia, get her out of my sight. Yes my queen. The dark-skinned woman grabbed Artemis by the arm but the orange-haired woman shrugged her off and stomped out, with Nubia quickly following. I am sorry for that. Most of the island has had bad experiences with men. Diana sighed. I will make sure no one attacks you or throws offensive insults. Thanks, I guess. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head. But if I'm going to fight Ares and Hades I'll need to know everything about them, strengths and weaknesses. War Woman raised an eyebrow while Diana nodded with a smile. Of course, my sister Holly will lead you to our library. She said as War Woman or Holly nodded and walked towards Naruto. Come on. Holly said as she walked past him with Naruto following behind her. The two passed the guards without issues this time, Holly led Naruto out of the royal palace and into what looked like a royal garden. You are not what I expected. Excuse me. Naruto blinked at that. Well I thought Ares would defeat you in an instant, though he was weakened he was still a god. Plus you were respectful to my sister and ignored Artemis's taunting. Holly said as she smiled at him. Most people would think twice to fight a battle that's not their own but you fought Ares and saved my sister, for that I am grateful. War woman you don't ha, Holly, she interrupted. Please call me Holly. I guess you can call me Naruto, he said as he held out his hand. Holly looked at it for a moment before shaking in it. Nice to meet you Naruto. Naruto stared up the many books that filled the large and probably ancient library with wide eyes. Next to him, Holly just smirked before patting him on the back. Well, I'm off for a war council, she said before turning and walking away. Good luck. So you're the man the island's been talking about. Naruto looked up and was met with the sight of a young woman seated at the top of the shelves. She has long red hair, blue eyes and is dressed in an all-white dress that reached just above her knees. She was beautiful and unlike most of the women here she had a gentle smile on her face. And you're the woman of my dreams? Naruto said as the young woman giggled. It's great to meet you but I need to put a name to that gorgeous face. Oh you must be popular with the ladies. The woman said as calmly jumped of the shelf, did a backflip and landed right on her feet. Does that work with everyone, my Romeo? Only for my Juliet, Naruto replied as he approached. Oh you've read it? A beautiful classic isn't it? The woman said excitedly. Yep, Naruto replied. I read it for a book report I had last year for school. I am familiar with school but what is a book report? She asked with a frown. Our teachers give us books to read and have us write down what we feel the book meant and how it has made us feel inside. Naruto said only to wince at the squeal of delight that came from the woman. Truly? By the gods I wish it was like that here. Please tell me more. Slow down Juliet, we can talk about that later. First I need to know all I can about Ares and Hades. Naruto said as the woman's smile turned upside down. What exactly do you need to know? The redhead asked. Everything. 
A few hours later Naruto stared at one of the few books translated in English with a frown. According to most of them, Ares had no visible weakness. The only reason he was even weakened was due to the other gods imprisoning him in the passage of time. Gods had perfect healing, meaning they could regenerate lost limbs and heal broken bones in seconds. That healing factor would be a problem. Does Ares have like an old wound we can exploit? Naruto asked Juliet, he still didn't know her name and took to calling her that. His godly healing factor literally heals everything. He doesn't even have any scars to show his time of battle. Juliet said with a frown. Around her is a pile of books. Apparently she understood of lot languages and could easily read them. Not only that but Hades is said to have magic beyond this world. If only we had something too. Naruto's eyes narrowed before in a burst of speed vanished and appeared at the end of the room. His hand wrapped around the throat of a figure in a purple robe. My Romeo, wait. Juliet called as she quickly ran towards the two. You've been spying on us for a while now, why? Naruto growled, loosening his grip so they could answer. The figure wore a hood with only her lips showing. Just you, they, a woman said in a monotone. I've been watching since you came to the island. I'm flattered, but that doesn't answer my question. Naruto growled before Juliet grabbed him by the arm. Wait this is all a misunderstanding. She's a friend. Juliet said as she tried to remove Naruto's grip on the other woman. Then why was she spying on me? For all I know she's a minion of Hades. I am not, the woman replied in a monotone. She's telling the truth, she's one of us. Juliet said as Naruto looked at her before letting go of the cloaked woman and stepping back. Raven, you shouldn't sneak up on people like that. Introduce yourself first. The now named Raven pulled down her hood revealing a beautiful pale-skinned teenage girl. She has short purple hair that reaches just above her neck, deep purple eyes and what looked like a small red gem on the middle of her forehead. Hi, I'm Raven. Raven introduced blankly. Come on, I think you can do better than that. Raven gave a small wave. I guess that's better, Juliet sighed. How goes the curse breaking? Diana just needs sleep and she'll be back to full strength, Raven said before turning to Naruto. I know you, Superman right? Yes, Naruto nodded only to frown at the look Raven gave him. I was expecting Omniman, we could really use his help, Raven said as Naruto frowned. Yeah well. Naruto turned away from them and walked back to his books. I do not know what you said but if he took offense to it. The red-haired woman said as Raven looked at her then back to Naruto. I said his father would have been a better choice, Raven said before walking off to another section of the library. Oh, tell him your name already. He really thinks it's Juliet. Oh, that, a few hours later, Naruto was approached by Juliet. The blonde rubbed his eyes as he put down the last book. Have you found anything? Naruto asked as Juliet shook her head. All I could find was how amazing these two are. Alexa, Superman I think I found something. Raven called as she slowly floated towards them with a large black book in hand. So it's Alexa huh? Naruto asked as Alexa's eyes widened, she'd forgotten to tell him her name. Good to know. Our Raven. What did you find? Alexa asked quickly, trying her best to hide her embarrassment at forgetting to introduce her name. A weakness perhaps? No, but there is a spell that can boost our two most powerful fighters tenfold. I only have enough power to cast it on two people and it only lasts ten minutes. We have to choose two fighters and when to use the spell. Raven said with a frown. We have to go inform the queen then, Alexa said as Raven nodded. Here's the book. Raven stretched her hand out and the book floated into Alexa's hands. The details are on the page I've marked, now go tell Diana. I have something to talk about with Superman. All right then, Alexa said, she looked at Naruto for a moment before smiling and walking away. So what do you need me for? Naruto asked as Raven frowned. I've seen you before, the Battle of New York, Raven said. I know what you can do. Uh, okay. My father is a high ranking demon, he's basically Lucifer but downgraded. Years ago, he was sealed inside of me. Raven explained as she pointed to the gemstone on her forehead. Ever since, I've been running for my life. His followers will stop at nothing to free him and plunge the world into darkness. The rogue demon Damien Darkblood managed to bring me here and Diana took me in. Good for you but what does that have to do with me? Naruto asked with a frown. The entire island knows I'm a hybrid and they treat me with hostility. Despite Diana explaining my situation, 
everyone is on edge. Heck, when Ares escaped fingers were pointed at me. Raven said, a hint of anger in her tone. I'm tired of being looked at with fear and hatred. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful to Alexa, Diana and Nubia for being there for me but I can't live like this. I'm sorry, but what do you need me for? I can leave anytime I want, but I have nothing out there, my mother died trying to protect me from cultists. I have no one. Plus I need someone to protect me. Raven said as she sighed. What I'm asking is for you to be my protector for a while, once I get a complete handle of my powers I'll leave you alone, and I'll even pay you for your services. Pay me how? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Money. He had that for days. He could literally just grab a lump of coal and squeeze it until it turns to diamond. One of my many powers is being an empath, I can feel the emotions of people close to me. Raven said as she smiled nervously. The dark cloak she was dressed in covered her completely. She opened it up and revealed her scantily clad body. Raven was dressed in a dark purple leotard that hugged her body tightly. Her legs went covered, showing how long and perfect they were. Her feet were covered in purple boots. I can feel the lust hidden behind your calm demeanor. I, I can help with that, pleasure you, my body is yours. Naruto narrowed his eyes, he stared at her body with a frown. Raven was beautiful, that was true but she was also trembling. She was willing to sell her body for this. The fact that she was trembling spoke volumes of this, she didn't want to but this was all she had to offer. Fine then, Naruto said with a sigh. I'll protect you once we get off the island. Really, you'll do it? Raven asked with hopeful eyes. Yep, Naruto said as he smiled. The blonde walked forward and gently closed Raven's cloak. Free of charge. You and I are going to be together until God knows when. We might as well get know each other. Raven felt tears in her eyes as she rushed into Naruto and hugged him tightly. She could feel his emotions, while he lusted for her Naruto pushed his lust to the side in favor of helping her. She could feel he genuinely wanted to help her. A few hours later Alex returned to find Raven and Naruto seated together. Raven had a smile on her face as Naruto explained something wildly. So then I punched the immortal in the face so hard I knocked him out, Naruto said with a grin. Alexa smiled only at the fact that Raven had made a new friend. Raven only spoke to a few people on the island, most of the Amazonians were prejudiced towards her for something that was totally out of her control. It was nice seeing her like this, especially with her hood down. A sign Raven was comfortable. So you're here rather than preparing for Ares and Hades. Alexa sighed as Artemis stomped past her. Her fellow redhead had a scowl on her face as she made a beeline for Superman. Burying your nose in books rather than sharpening your blade or wait you don't have a blade. Alexa was about to intervene when Raven did the unthinkable. The purple-haired girl raised a brow at Artemis before bursting into laughter. Alexa blinked and Artemis froze in shock. No one had ever heard Raven laugh before. What do you find so funny? Artemis growled as she glared at Raven. Said girl put her hood on and tried to control her laughter. Demon spawn. Artemis raised her fist only for Naruto to catch it. So far, the blonde was always calm and collected. But now he looked. Angry. His eyes glowed a menacing red as he glared. Don't even think about it, he growled. Artemis tried to pull her hand away but his grip was too strong for her. Naruto, let her go. Raven said as she put her hand on his. Naruto looked at her before roughly letting go. Raven then turned to Artemis. Why don't we settle this with a spar? Not only will it act as a sort of training but we can all let out our aggression. I think that's a great idea, Alexa chipped in. Artemis doesn't respect the blonde male, said blonde had been taking it in stride but now it was starting to annoy him. Artemis clearly wanted to push him on the age to start a fight. A practice much, hopefully we can learn a thing all too. Artemis just huffed. Very well, we met in the training grounds in half an hour, she said before walking off. What was that all about? Naruto asked as Raven pulled her hood down. Well it's actually funny, Raven said calmly. Naruto raised an eyebrow and she explained. You know how I can feel emotions right? Well Artemis is having sexual feelings towards you and she doesn't know why. Okay I'm good with the ladies but even I'm not that good. Naruto said in shock. That woman hates me. She's just expressing her insecurities with rage. Deep down she wants you to fight her, rip apart her clothes, pin her down and take her. That's a lie, do I look like I can make this stuff up? Fair point, boys, you have school tomorrow, Debbie said as Mark frowned. 
The two had moved to the living room after Naruto was done with the dishes. 30 more minutes mom please, Mark begged. Once he's done we'll go to sleep. It's almost midnight, you can catch up tomorrow, besides he lives here you can ask him anything anytime. Debbie said as she folded her arms, unaware that her skimpy sleepwear had Naruto staring at her. She's right, I'll tell you on the way to school. Naruto said as he got up. Come on, show me to my room. Mark groaned as he too stood up and walked upstairs with Naruto following. Good night boys, whatever, good night Debbie. Naruto stared at the red-haired woman across the arena from him with a frown. Honestly them fighting just before a big battle was a dumb idea but, when in Rome. Are you ready swine? Artemis growled as she got into a fighting stance. That's just uncalled for, Naruto muttered as he got into a loose stance, I'm ready. With that Artemis roared and charged at him, she crossed the distance fairly quickly, faster than any normal human would actually. But. Naruto rushed forward with his super speed. Grabbing her by the neck, and easily lifting her off the ground, she struggled in his grip, as he looked up at her. You lose, Naruto said as he brought her down to eye level before headbutting her hard enough to knock her out. Genuinely expecting a bigger fight but oh well. Yeah I knew this would happen but that was just underwhelming, Raven said as she floated towards him. Come on, we need to get you magic resistant as soon as possible. Hades isn't known for fighting with his fists. Okay so what do I need to do, Naruto said as Raven looked at him seriously. I want you to tea pose naked for an hour, is that a joke? Yes, did you enjoy it? Not really but good effort, Naruto said as he gave her a thumbs up. I'll take it, but seriously I need you to get naked, Raven said as she folded her arms. This feels weird, Naruto muttered, the blonde was fully naked and had a white glow around him. How long do I have to be like this? Just a few more minutes and I'll be done, Raven said, she was a few feet away from him and floating cross-legged. You've actually done pretty good for someone told to stay still for an hour straight. Do you meditate? Kind of, sometimes after training I have to stay still and wait for my bones and organs to heal properly before I can move. That's disgusting, the half-demon replied. So training for you is breaking bones and injuring organs? Father is strict on my training, Naruto said, eyes staring at the stars above. Us Viltrumites can get stronger through the passage of time and near-death injuries. Basically what doesn't kill us literally makes us stronger. Oh, so why's your father rushing? Raven asked as she flipped a page from her book. The spell just needed to be cast and then wait an hour for it to take effect. She didn't need to be here but she wanted to keep Naruto company, plus she didn't have anything better to do. What? You said you can get stronger just by aging right? Why can't you just live your life and let your nature do its thing? Raven shrugged. She watched Naruto think things through unable to answer the question. Raven knew the blonde was thinking things through and didn't push it any further. After a few minutes the glow went down, Raven silently left Naruto as the blonde floated by himself. Is this an alien thing? Naruto blinked and turned to see Holly looking at him with an amused smile. What exactly are you doing? I uh I'm meditating, Naruto replied. Really, and you're doing it naked? I like to feel one with nature, okay. Mind if I float next to you? Holly asked as the blonde nodded and gestured next to him, so what's got you thinking? Nothing much, just letting my mind wonder, Naruto said as Holly smiled. I can tell something has you rattled, is it the two gods? No it's just, Raven said something that I've been thinking about for a while now, and it kinda gave me doubts. Doubts I shouldn't have considered, Naruto sighed as he looked at his hands, who am I really? I know a thing or two about living in someone else's shadow. The war woman said with a sad smile. Diana and I are twins, but you can never tell, she's always been the fastest, strongest and the smartest. She just has this air about her, like she's the elder more experienced one. And I hated her, I hated how I was always compared to her. Always one step behind her and it infuriated me. Diana bless her soul was none the wiser. All she wanted was a sister and I couldn't do it. When she was crowned queen I decided to leave, see what the world had to offer. Without all the self-doubt and whispers of others dictating my life, I saw what I could do. I was strong and a hero. Without being in my sister's shadow anymore I was able to be who I am. Naruto when we live in someone else's shadow for so long, we forget that we are amazing in our own right, Holly said as she put a hand on his shoulder. Your father may be this otherworldly being but Naruto you're just as amazing. 
Thanks to you we have a fighting chance, so don't sell yourself short. Thanks, I guess. Naruto said, a small smile on his face. Anytime, we can't have you acting all timid on the night of a big battle. Holly laughed. The two then floated in silence for a few minutes before Holly yawned and left to go to sleep. Naruto was dressed in his suit along with a some light Greek armor that had been made for him. He stood at the front lines with Diana and Holly. Behind the three were thousands of Amazon warriors. Each woman armed to the teeth and ready for battle. A tornado of fire appeared a few feet away before it disappeared, revealing Ares. The god of war was dressed head to toe in full black armor as he held up his sword. Suddenly the ground began to shake as thousands of skeletons dressed in old armor with rusty weapons began to rise up. Black smoke appeared next to Ares revealing the dark god Hades. Dressed in dark armor that left his arms and face exposed. Long smooth black hair that reached to his back and a goatee. Give up Diana, Hades said, his voice somehow projecting to everyone. We outman you ten to one. The god snapped his fingers and even more skeletons came out of the ground. Stand down now or else. The sky darkened and purple lightning could be seen in the dark clouds. Is that supposed to scare us? Diana yelled as she held up her sword. Amazons, let's show him our fear. We have no fear. So be it, Hades said as Ares took a step forward and pointed. The thousands of undead gave off an inhuman roar before they charged. Amazons. Diana roared. Ada ACCCK. Naruto took off to the skies, eyes glowing red before his heat beams blasted the first roll of skeletons leaving nothing but bone ash. The beams twisted and turned before they found Ares and blasted him away from Hades. The war god grunted as he was sent flying into his skeleton soldiers. Naruto shot straight for him, leaving a shockwave behind him as he tackled the armored god. Ares caught himself with his sword as he glared at Naruto. Join me boy, we can do whatever we want with all those women. He said with a smirk behind his helmet. Make them love and pleasure us. Tempting but no thank you. Naruto said as he got into a stance. A shame, Ares said as he stabbed his sword into the ground. He then cracked his neck as he got into a stance. I haven't fought hand to hand in a long time. The two stared at each other for a second before they vanished and appeared in the middle, fists lashing out at each other. Naruto dodged a right hook and tried to counter with his own, but Ares quickly moved his head. Despite his size, Ares was very fast. The god easily caught Naruto by the neck with his left hand before punching the teen away with his right hand. Naruto was sent flying, the blonde quickly stopped himself in mid-air before he could crush into a few Amazons. The blonde's eyes widened at the form of Ares coming at him so fast. Naruto quickly fired his heat vision, the beams of hot red heat going for Ares' head only for his hand to block them. Ares then vanished and appeared behind Naruto delivering a Spartan kick to the blonde's back and sending him flying into the ground. Naruto didn't hit the ground when Ares appeared before him and uppercutted him to the sky. Before Naruto could go far, he was grabbed by the leg and slammed into the ground face first. It's a shame really, to think what you could accomplish if you joined me, Ares said as he picked Naruto up by the hair, the blonde groaning as blood dripped from his mouth. Ares' gauntlet fist smashed against the side of his head so hard some of the Viltrumite's teeth went flying out. But you were in my way, and I don't show mercy to my enemies. He then smashed his knee against the blonde's head before dripping the limp body. He held out his hand as his sword came flying at him, even killing the Amazons in its way as it did. Catching the large dark blade, Ares raised it and was about to stab into the teen when he was kicked away. Get up Naruto, Holly said as she stood protectively over Naruto. I'm so glad father isn't here, the blonde groaned as he stood up. The minor injuries he had gained were already healing. Ah oh, if it isn't the spare. Ares laughed as he looked at her mace. Such a savage weapon for a savage woman. I heard you call yourself the war woman now. A disgrace to the beauty of war if you ask me. Does this guy ever shut up? Naruto asked as stood next to Holly. Sadly no, Holly replied before glancing at Naruto. Let's take him together. You're on point, I'll follow. Naruto nodded as Holly yelled and ran at Ares. She swung her mace at him and he blocked with his sword only for Naruto to fly at his leg. The blonde pulled his legs back and kicked them against the god's knee with everything he had. Making the leg bend inwards. Ah! Ares roared in pain as Holly parred his sword away before delivering a blow to the side of the head that sent his helmet off. Naruto, 
who was behind Ares now, thrust his arms under the armored god's arms and clasped his hands at the back of war god's head. Let me go. Holly swung with all her strength, her first swing to his head disoriented Ares. The blonde god tried to free himself but Naruto wouldn't let him, the teen held him with so much strength the god couldn't believe it. War woman swung once more this time she dislocated his jaw. Her next swing seemed to have broken it almost clean off. The god's screams being nothing but gurgling of blood. Another hit and it was blown clean off. Ares struggles were barely there. Naruto's eyes glowed red before he fired right at the back of Ares' head. The god's eyes widened as he began to struggle harder. But another blow from Holly calmed him down. Naruto's heat vision burned through his skull, into his brain and came out of his eyes. All struggles stopped as Naruto let Ares fall to the ground. Two burning holes at the back of his head. Naruto stared at the dead god but before he could say anything Diana was sent crashing into him. Wahali was suddenly covered in purple-black magic and sent flying. Enough of this fuss, Hades said as he held out his hands, black magic covering them. All of you die. No, Naruto had all but teleported next to Hades, Diana's sword in hand before he swung it down and cut off both of the rogue god's arms. Not today. My hands. Hades screamed before he was hit in the side of the head with mace. Hades staggered back before he breathed a torrent of fire at War Woman. The breath attack making her fly back. Hades. Diana roared as she slammed into him. Her body covered in a black aura. Your time has come. Purple dark magical arm constructs appeared on Hades' stumps as he grabbed Diana and threw her off him. Before he could do more, Naruto fired his twin lasers at the god's back. The blonde was covered in the same black aura, Raven's spell boosting him tenfold. The blonde rushed in as Hades threw a punch but Naruto dodged and went in for an uppercut that sent the god flying. Hades was sent flying into the sky only for his eyes to widen at the sight of Naruto with his arms folded, waiting for him in the skies. The blonde smirked before he punched Hades back to the ground. As he fell he saw Diana waiting with her fist cocked back, she flew at him and punched him back up to the sky. Naruto grabbed Hades' leg and threw him to the ground. The god landed on his leg and broke it. E enough. Hades held out his hand and black chains wrapped around the approaching Diana. The warrior queen just flexed and his chains broke. It, it can't be. Diana rushed towards Hades at speeds the god couldn't keep up. She grabbed him by the neck and lifted his beaten form up. Hades tried to breath fire but Diana grabbed his mouth and pulled out his lower jaw. Hades clawed at her arm but it did nothing. Diana smirked at him before she threw him. Only for a clothesline from Naruto to stop his momentum. What should we do with him? Naruto asked as Diana floated over. The two were covered in a black aura as they looked down on him. I guess we would give him a painful death, Diana shrugged. Naruto's eyes glowed red before he fired his lasers at Hades' chest while Diana floated down and began to repeatedly stomp on the god's head. The chest burst into flames as the lasers cut into him and his face curved in. Soon he turned to golden dust and vanished. With Hades' death, his undead army turned to dust. They won. Looks like we won, Diana said with a smile as Naruto fell to the ground. I'm so tired, Naruto groaned as Diana laughed. Yeah Raven's spell does take its toll once it. Diana. Naruto. Holly called as she floated down to them. You did it. We did it. Diana said as she smiled at her sister. I saw how you took down Ares, I'm proud of you my sister. And I'm proud of you Diana, Holly said as she smiled back at her sister. And I need help because I can't feel my legs. Naruto said as the two sisters looked down at him before they burst out laughing. What are you laughing at? I'm in pain. They only laughed louder. Hey, Naruto turned to see Holly. Hey, Naruto greeted back. Holly who was dressed in a white toga that barely went past her knees gently floated over to Naruto. I've been looking for you, she said with a smile. Didn't expect you to be in the kitchen of all places. Eating after a big fight helps restore some of the energy. Naruto said as he ate a piece of cake. Sugar helps with energy gain. I thought your regeneration meant you didn't get tired? Holly asked as she stood next to him. Yeah but I have to get energy somewhere, Naruto said with a shrug so aren't you going to join the others? Oh that, it happens more often than you think around here. Holly said with a chuckle, I wanted to keep you company. Thanks, I don't think I'm welcome at an all-lesbian orgy, Naruto said with a chuckle. 
Truth be told I don't like the whole orgy scene, plus watching my sister do it is really awkward. Holly said as Naruto laughed. The Amazon slowly floated closer to the blonde until only a few inches were between them. I'd like to thank you, on behalf of the island. With that she leaned in and kissed him, present day. School bus, as fun as it was hearing you talk about slaying two gods, I don't want to know what you and Warwoman were getting up to. Mark said as Naruto shrugged. That's fair, Naruto said. The two brothers sat in silence for a few seconds before Mark spoke. Hey, why didn't you just, you know, fly to school? I wanted to spend some more time with you, get to know my brother more. Naruto with a smile. Plus I don't know where Reginald Vell Johnson High is. Yeah that makes sense, so what school did you go to before? I didn't really go to school, most of the time I just either studied or was out training. And when I became a hero I just kinda forgot about it. Hopefully this year I can pull some good grades and yeah just keep them I guess. I mean I crush coal and turn it into diamonds so, Naruto said just as the bus pulled up at the school's parking lot. That's your school? It looks like a dump. That's because it is, Mark said as they got up. I mean it does have some good people so. Oh, the girls? Naruto asked with a smirk as Mark yelped and was about to fall on his face when the blonde easily caught him by the back of his shirt. Watch your step. I don't feel comfortable talking about that with you, Mark muttered as they stepped off the bus. Well who are you going to talk about girl stuff with? Father or your mom? Naruto asked as Mark paused. He looked at his brother with a frown. Naruto stood a bit taller than him, dressed in a black leather jacket over a blue shirt with the Superman S on the chest and black jeans with some white shoes. While Mark hunched a bit, dressed in his favorite sweater and jeans. Naruto drew attention from a lot of people as they walked, maybe because he was new. Plus Naruto was dating Starfire and apparently War Woman. Maybe Mark could get some pointers. Fine, I'll talk to you about girls, Mark sighed as Naruto patted him on the back. Cheer up buddy. I know a few single ladies on the superhero side of things. Naruto said as Mark turned to him with wide eyes. For real? I got you, Naruto said with a nod. The blonde then pulled out his phone. I'm supposed to meet this girl who's supposed to show me around. The two brothers stared at the many girls who were looking their way. Which one do you think is? I guess you're the new kid huh? The boys blinked as a beautiful red-haired girl approached them. Naruto right? Yes. And you're, Naruto checked his phone. Samantha Eve Wilkins? Just call me Eve, the girl said as Naruto nodded. You two know each other? He's my brother, Naruto said with a proud smile as Mark looked away in embarrassment. Oh, you know I can actually see it, Eve said with a nod. Well, we better get moving. We have the same classes so I can show you around at lunch. Neat, Naruto said before turning to Mark. I'll see you around, Mark. Uh, okay. Mark said before quickly walking away. Huh, you sure you guys are brothers? Eve asked as Naruto turned to her. Half brothers, we only met yesterday. Naruto said, making Eve gasp in shock. We'll get there eventually. Uh, okay, so your locker is this way. You okay there champ, you look like you're about to fall asleep. Eve giggled as Naruto sighed. Oh my god that was so boring, Naruto groaned as he stood up from desk. That's school for you. Eve said with a smile. Now let's go for that tour. Yes please, I'm practically a zombie. As the two walked into the hallway, a crowd of people drew their attention. Some kind of fight, Eve said with a frown. Honestly that happens a lot here. Is that so, Naruto said as he focused on the crowd. Looks like it's over. The crowd quickly dispersed and revealed Mark who was on the ground and being helped up by some other kid. Mark? Eve asked as Naruto quickly walked over to his brother. Uncaring for anyone in his way, the blonde made his way to his brother. Hey Mark, you okay? Naruto asked as he went to Mark's other side and helped him up. Hey a uh, Mark, thanks. A girl, dark skin and black hair said. And no problem. Mark said with a forced smile, happy to help. I guess I'll see you around, the girl said before she turned around and walked away. She's gone. Mark whispered. Yep, Mark's friend answered as Mark let out a long painful groan. I can't feel my legs, Mark groaned. What happened here? Naruto asked with a frown. Todd happened, and Mark tried to save the girl. Though in the end the girl did the whole saving. The boy said with a chuckle. Wait who the hell are you? Naruto, Mark's brother, 
the blonde said, and you are? I'm William, Mark's bestie. William said as Naruto raised an eyebrow, so you're him huh? Nice to meet you then, you too you tall drink of handsome. Take me to the infirmary please, Naruto and will help Mark to the infirmary, though Mark and Will didn't notice how quiet Naruto was the entire time. A few hours later. So you survived your first day, Eve said as walked towards Naruto's desk. Guess I did, Naruto muttered, his eyes focused on the door as everyone filled out of the class. That's a good thing, but yet you don't sound happy, Eve said with a raised eyebrow. Most kids would have been rushing towards the door by now but you're still here. Yeah I'm waiting for someone, Naruto said as his eyes narrowed. The blonde then stood up and turned to Eve. Thanks for showing me the ropes, with that the blonde grabbed his backpack and walked off. Eve narrowed her eyes before she quickly followed after him. She'd spent most of the day with him and Naruto seemed colder for some reason. In fact he'd been like this since he saw his brother get beat up. Hey you're Todd right? Naruto asked as he stopped in front of the school's resident bully. Yeah who the hell are you? Todd grunted as Naruto smiled. I'm new here and I'm also Mark's brother. Naruto said as everyone in the hallway stopped and began spectating. Oh you and that asswipe are related. Todd asked as he looked at Naruto with narrowed eyes. What, you here to get a beating like your brother? No nothing like that, I just wanted to ask you to stop harassing him, that's all. Naruto said as Todd laughed. No thanks bro, beating up that little bitch is the highlight of me arc. Naruto's hand was a blur of speed as it came up and grabbed Todd by the neck. The boy could only gasp for air as Naruto began to squeeze. You seem to think that I was asking, Naruto said calmly as he lifted the boy off his feet. Now listen closely, if you so much as go near Mark 1 will break both of your arms and shove them up your ass, got that? Todd, whose face was turning purple, quickly nodded. Good, Naruto said as he forcefully opened a nearby locker and casually shoved Todd in. Have a nice day. And with a loud bam, Naruto closed the locker. Naruto. The blonde turned to Eve as she looked at him with wide eyes. W what did you do? The blonde just casually walked past her. What's on your mind? Naruto looked away from the window and turned to his girlfriend. Well one of them at least. Nothing, just something that happened at school, he said as Holly hummed. Naruto was seated at the edge of the bed with a naked Cory soundly sleeping while an equally naked Holly wrapped her arms around his midsection. Was it something to do with your brother? The Amazon asked as Naruto sighed. Yeah, this asshole beat him up and apparently he bullies him a lot. I can't help but think if I was there from the beginning maybe I could have stopped it. Naruto said Holly snuggled into him. Yeah you probably would have, Holly muttered. I know you're just now learning about your brother and you have no idea what you're doing but the key is to always talk to each other. Learn what he likes, what he dislikes and what motivates him. And don't treat it like it's homework, but like a fun hobby. I'll try. Naruto said as Holly kissed his cheek. You know, I really wanted to beat the crap out of the guy, to break every single bone in his body. Then why didn't you? Because I kept hearing your voice in my head, telling me it's wrong. Naruto said with a sigh. That's good, I'm the little angel on your shoulder. Now come back to bed. Mommy needs cuddles. Holly said as Naruto snorted. Mommy, really? Shut up and kiss me. Holly said as Naruto turned around and kissed the older woman. A few hours later, Naruto flew back to the Grayson residence. So something interesting happened, Mark said as he took a seat next to Naruto at the dinner table. I'm home. Nolan announced as he appeared in a blur and took a seat at the head of the table. I fought a dragon in Hong Kong. Naruto you should have seen it, it could breathe ice and fire at the same time. Honey, Mark has something he'd like to share with us. Debbie said as everyone turned to Mark. So uh, my powers just kicked in. Mark said with a nervous smile. Are you sure? Nolan asked as Mark nodded. Yeah, threw a whole trash bag into outer space. Naruto, check if your brother has powers. Yes father, Naruto said before poking Mark in the shoulder. Yeah, he does have powers. What was that all about? Mark asked with a raised eyebrow. That poke had enough strength in it to send a grown man flying, Naruto said with a smile. Congratulations Mark. Yeah we're all happy for you, right honey? Nolan seemed to have a far away look before his wife kicked him in the chin. Yes of course, we can start training right away. Oh man I can't wait. Mark said in excitement. I'm gonna be flying, 
lifting cars over my head and lasers pew pew. Calm down Mark. I don't think you'll be getting lasers anytime soon. Nolan said with a chuckle. W wait what's that supposed to mean? I don't get lasers. Mark asked as his body deflated. Nope, never gonna happen. Nolan said only for his wife to kick him in the shin from underneath the table. I mean Naruto is a freak of nature, it's a power unique to only him. It's a one in a billion ability that comes around every thousand years, and the fact that he can twist and turn them around. Mark, I'm sure you can still fly at the speed of sound, right? Debbie said with a forced smile. Of course, just get a good night's rest and I'll teach you, Nolan said as Mark nodded excitedly. The family would then happily eat dinner before the boys went up to their rooms. Mark couldn't sleep, he was just too excited. He had superpowers now, just like his father and brother. Now he could be just like them, saving the world. Suddenly, a noise grabbed his attention. Mark quickly turned to his window only to see Naruto waving at him. The black-haired teen quickly went to the window and opened it. Naruto, what are you, come on, let's go. Naruto said with a smile. It's a nice night and it would be a waste to not go flying. B but I can't. What if I fall? Mark asked nervously. He really wanted to fly, but then what if he couldn't do it? What if he couldn't make his father proud? Then you get back up, Naruto said with a shrug. I know the pressure you're feeling, trust me I've been there. But don't let that hold you down, those doubts will grow roots, wrap around your legs and never let you fly. Now take my hand, I promise I won't let you fall. Promise? I promise, Naruto said with a smile as Mark nodded. The boy quickly stepped out the window and grabbed his brother's arms. Plus even if you fall it's not like you'll break any bones, just a fracture. Wait w-h-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-a-
A smile that to Debbie looked a bit too much like Nolan's. So ninja mime, what's that all about? Debbie asked as Naruto's eyes seemed to shine. Oh it's only the greatest movie ever made, Naruto said excitedly. It stars the greatest action movie hero ever, Johnny Cage. Debbie turned to the TV, a few minutes into watching the movie and she came to the conclusion that it sucked. The only good part was the main character, the plot of the movie didn't make sense in, well the fight scenes were pretty good. This Johnny Cage guy was a pretty good actor. Though he seemed to do the splits a lot. About ten minutes later Mark burst into the house. Her son looked upset and he stomped his way up the stairs. We'll pick things up tomorrow. Her husband called out as he walked in. Nolan what happened? She asked as she got up and went to him. I pushed him too hard, Nolan said with a sigh. I thought he was like his brother, I thought he could handle it. Clearly I was wrong. Aren't you being a bit too harsh? Debbie asked with a frown. There he goes again, Nolan liked to compare Naruto, his perfect Viltrumite son, to poor Mark. I don't think you can push these like this. Are you questioning me on raising a Viltrumite? Nolan asked with narrowed eyes. The statement was unsaid but it was loud and clear to Debbie. Since Nolan had raised a perfect son already, the fault was all on Mark. I'm, I'm gonna go, Naruto said as he quickly stood up and left. We talked about this, Nolan. You promised you wouldn't compare Mark to his brother anymore. Debbie growled as her husband stared at her for a moment before he sighed. I'm not comparing, I'm just saying. Mark can learn a thing or two from his brother. Isn't that what siblings do? Nolan said as Debbie sighed. Sometimes she forgot he was an alien. From my perspective, it kind of looks like you're putting them against each other. Mark may be a bit slower to take in all of this, unlike Naruto, who could fly since. From the moment he came out of the womb, Nolan said with a proud smile. A baby, Debbie mumbled. You have to remember that you've raised Naruto as a Viltrumite and Mark was human a couple of hours ago. Fine, I'll give him time. Nolan grumbled as he folded his arms. That's all I ask. Naruto landed a few blocks from school before quickly taking a walk from there. He decided to fly to school to let Mark heal from whatever brutal training their father had put him through. And as he walked past the school's entrance, he was met with the sight of Eve. She seemed to be looking around for someone and when she spotted him she smiled. Waving him over, Naruto couldn't help but admire her smile. It was nice. Hey, she greeted. Sup, Naruto greeted back. Peak dialogue right there. You left in a rush yesterday, Eve said as they began walking to their lockers. More specifically Naruto's. I was angry, Naruto sighed with a sigh. I didn't want to lash out at anybody. Especially you, you were nothing but helpful. Green eyes stared at Naruto for a moment before she smiled. Apology accepted, I guess, Eve said with a chuckle. Oh, that was an apology. But I didn't do anything, Naruto said with a smirk. And after that heartfelt speech, Eve said with a roll of her eyes, Come on, let's get to class. Lend me your math book, Naruto said as he put a few books in his locker and slammed it closed. I refuse, you took back your apology, what? Fine I'm sorry for not being sorry. Apology accepted, you may have my math book, my good man, the redhead said with a smug smile. I can't believe I apologized for nothing, Naruto grumbled. Women, am I right? Eve said with a chuckle as she winked at him. The fact that you even say that, after that the two made to class, a few hours later they were having lunch at the cafeteria with Naruto holding a math book in one hand while eating a burger in the other. Honestly it's no longer as disgusting and I'm now fascinated by it. Eve said with a shake of her head. Naruto had already eaten seven burgers and was left with two more. How is your body so in shape? I burned through a lot of calories, Naruto said with a shrug. Ah oh, hey, you're Mark's brother right? Naruto and Eve turned to see a beautiful dark skinned girl. You guys mind if I sit? No problem, Eve said with a smile as the girl took a seat. So what do you want with my brother? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. I'm Amber, Mark protected me from Thad yesterday. Amber said as Naruto nodded. I remember, well I was wondering, is Mark dating anyone? Amber asked. Naruto stared at the girl for a while, she was pretty hot and Mark definitely needed a girlfriend. Plus he was a big brother now, helping his younger brother score was part of the job description right? Wait just like that? You like him? Eve asked as Amber shrugged. What can I say, the chivalry thing does it for me. Amber said with a smile and a shrug. 
Mark isn't seeing anyone right now, but if you could pass me your number. Naruto said as he put down his book and took out his phone. Yeah sure, Amber said as she took the phone and put in her number. I'll make sure I get it to him, Naruto said Amber nodded before she stood up. Thanks, please don't make him keep a gal waiting. Amber said before walking off with a smile. So that happened, Eve said as they watched Amber leave, you're gonna give her number to Mark? I mean he did get beat up for her so, Naruto said as he ate a burger. I hope you get fat, Eve said blankly before taking a bite out of her salad. I mean cows chew on leaves and vegetables all day and they also get fat, Naruto replied calmly. I'm never gaining weight, ever. Eve growled as she pointed her fork at him. Got that mister I ate 10 burgers and still have arbs. So you've been checking me out? Naruto asked with a teasing smile. Oh please, Eve snorted. As much as you've been checking me out. I see, Naruto said with a hum. Hey so Johnny Cage is in town and he's doing a book signing of his autobiography. Was wondering if we could go together. Oh, Eve winced. I have a boyfriend. What does that have to do with my question? Naruto asked. You're asking me on date, I'm asking you to come with me to a book signing, Naruto said in a blank voice. I asked because I didn't want to stand in line bored out of my mind. Oh, Eve said as she blushed in embarrassment. Are you that desperate for me to ask you out, Eve? Is that it, you want me to seduce you? Naruto asked as he smirked. Get real, Eve said as she rolled her eyes. You're just gaslighting me, you totally asked me out on a date. Gaslighting isn't a thing, Eve, Naruto said with a wave. So what do you say? Wanna go meet the goat? I don't even know who this Johnny Cage guy is, Eve said as Naruto's eyes widened. Blasphemy. How do you not know who the goat is? He is the greatest action star that has ever lived, Naruto yelled as Eve just looked at him in amusement. Well I've never heard of him, and you think I'd want to go out with someone like you. Now that's just mean, I can't believe you snuck me out of school early. Eve grumbled, there's no one here. The two teens stood at the entrance of a library where the event will be taking place. The place was empty with only a few people inside. Naruto had literally snuck them out of school just so they could be here extra early. I didn't want to stand in line, Naruto said with a shrug. Then what was the whole point of me coming here? For moral support, Naruto said, before adding. Plus it's a date I tricked you. I knew it. This whole time I knew it. Eve yelled as she pointed a finger at the blonde. Yes yes I'm really in love with you, Naruto said with a smirk. All this was just to go on a date with you, heck Johnny Cage doesn't even exist. I made him up just so I could trick you. That's right hey wait a minute, Eve said as her eyes widened. Do you really want me to take you out on a date that badly? Don't turn this on me. You're the one who clearly wants to ask me out but then you're gaslighting me, Eve yelled as Naruto looked at her blankly. Get over yourself, Eve. Gaslighting isn't a thing, Naruto said, a cheeky smirk present on his face. Oh yeah. Well I read that Johnny Cage doesn't do his own stunts, Eve said with a smirk as Naruto's instantly dropped. That's a low blow right there Eve. Yeah well I looked up this thing. It's supposed to start in, two hours. Will you two just get in already? Another voice cut in. Both teens turned to see the library door open with a young woman slightly older than them staring at them with a frown. Ah uh, what? Naruto asked in confusion. You win the first prize bullshit that my dad set up. Now get in if you want to meet him. The woman said with a frown. Wait you're saying we get to meet Johnny Cage, now? Yes, so come in already. The mystery woman held the door open for them. Naruto quickly grabbed Eve's hand and went in. Never seen kids your age being Johnny Cage fans, she asked as Eve scoffed. It's this guy, I just got dragged into this mess. Eve said as she looked at the woman. She had short blonde hair, with blue eyes with a slightly athletic build. Dressed in a leather jacket over a white t-shirt that said, I heart Johnny Cage, and some tight blue jeans and black high tops, he's the super mega fan. He must be the only one under 30 that actually likes the old man, the woman snorted. By the way, I'm Cassie. I'm Eve and this, how much for the t-shirt? This is Naruto, Eve said with a deadpan. Even though he doesn't look it, he's a big fan of Johnny Cage. The old man's gonna flip when he sees you, Cassie said with a chuckle. Just promise me you won't scream like a little girl when he comes out. I will make no such promise, just as Naruto said this, masked gunmen stormed into the library. 
Okay nobody move. Four of them, all dressed in ski masks holding AKs. Who the fuck robs a library? Cassie couldn't help but ask as guns were aimed at them. We don't need these three, just the actor and his fancy bank account. One yelled as he pointed his gun at the trio. Don't even think about it, Eve growled as she stepped forward. She then glanced at Cassie, she seemed calm. Please tell me this isn't part of the show? Nope, Cassie casually said. We are getting robbed. I'll go look in the back, one of the gunmen said before he quickly ran off. I swear if Johnny Cage pops out of the corner and this whole thing turns into a wacky shitty fight flick I will burn this place to the ground. Eve growled as she held out her hand. No hard feelings guys, just business, the gunman said before firing. The bullets hit a pink wall of energy as Eve stared at the bullets in shock, they were real. What the fuck, well you don't see that every day, Eve blinked as Cassie, covered in a green aura shot forward faster than a speeding bullet and delivered a kick to the gunman's face. This time, Eve's jaw fell to the ground as Naruto casually used heat vision to blast the gun out of the one of the other gunmen. One more remaining, Eve wrapped her powers around his form before she slammed him into a nearby bookshelf. What are the odds that we rob a library that just so happens to have three superheroes in disguise? The only gunman who was still awake since Naruto only disarmed him asked as he raised his hands in surrender. Astronomical, Eve deadpanned. Here's Johnny. Suddenly the fourth gunman was sent flying into his comrade. And there he was, dressed in a white suit with the tie undone. The same green aura that was around Cassie was also coming off his body. Johnny Cage stared at all three of them with a shiny grin. Only for his glasses to break apart. Damn it he got me shades. The man grumbled only to pull out a spare set from his pocket and put them on. Oh yeah. That, was the coolest thing I have ever seen. Naruto said in complete awe. Eve facepalmed. And Cassie just sighed. After everything was cleaned up and Naruto got his book signed. The three went to the nearby ice cream store. I can't believe you're Superman. Eve said as Naruto shrugged. Superman was an inspiration to not just her but most of her teammates and some other teen superheroes out there. You're like the greatest teen superhero ever. Don't sell yourself short Adam Eve, Cassie said with a smirk. I've seen you on the news, you're pretty great. Yeah but I haven't fought an entire alien invasion by myself, Eve said as both turned to Naruto. Starfire helped a lot, Naruto said as he ate his ice cream. And you? What was that green stuff you and your dad had around your bodies? Eve turned to Cassie as the blonde young woman shrugged. I don't really know what it is. All I know is that I get it from my dad. The rest is classified. Cassie said with a smirk. So you're not a super? Eve asked in confusion, only for Naruto to cut in. She's military, Naruto said as he looked at Cassie. Bingo. Oh, I didn't know we had superhumans in our military. Eve said as Cassie chuckled. I'm a special case, she said before looking at her phone. It's been fun you guys but I have to go see my dad, hope to see you guys soon. The young woman quickly stood up, gave a wave and walked off. Well today has been interesting, Eve said with a sigh. And to think you didn't want to come, Naruto said with a chuckle. It's getting pretty late, and I have somewhere to be so see you at school tomorrow. The blonde said before he gave her a smirk and vanished in a blur. Show off, Eve muttered with a small smile. Today was probably the best date nun date she has ever been on. I'm so tired. Holly groaned with a sigh as she floated over to her bed. I thought you didn't get tired. Seated on the bed was an amused Naruto. The paperwork is a killer, the black haired woman said as she floated onto Naruto's form with the blonde wrapping his arms around her. Hum, I like cuddles. There, there. Naruto said as he rubbed the small of her back. You want some sexy, sexy tango time? I hate when you call it that, Holly muttered. No, I just want to cuddle. We can do that sexy sexy whatchamacallit tomorrow. You promise? I swear I will be the nastiest deep throat goddess you ever saw. Holly hummed as she closed her hands. Now tell me about your day while I fall asleep. Well I met Johnny Cage today, Naruto said with a smile. It all started with this girl at school. When Naruto woke up the next day, the bed next to him was empty. Rubbing his eyes, Naruto made his way to the large window and flew out. He went straight to his father's house. I'm home. Naruto opened the door and froze at the sight of a crying Debbie. Next to her was Cecil who had his ever-present frown. What's all what's going on? 
Kid I need to talk to you in the other room, Cecil said and without even waiting for a confused Naruto to reply, walked out of the living room and into the kitchen. Cecil what's going on? Naruto was in the kitchen a second later. Kid, something bad just happened. The guardians and your father were attacked last night. Your father was badly hurt and might pull through but the rest of the guardians didn't make it. I'm sorry kid, but Holly's dead. Naruto's eyes widened as his body went cold. No, no it can't be. I know you two were close and I'm sorry. But right now, the earth is defenseless. We need you to step up kid. Cecil. Now isn't the time. Debbie yelled as she walked into the kitchen. Just leave us alone. Cecil stared for a bit before he nodded and vanished in a flash of blue light. Naruto just stared at the ground with wide blank eyes. He felt Debbie wrap him up in a hug as she softly sobbed. Naruto felt something deep cut into his heart. Truthfully, he doesn't remember the last time he ever cried. And as tears fell from his eyes, Naruto held Debbie closer. Naruto stared at the bandaged form of his father with a blank face. The blonde had never seen his father so. The man was so weak that Naruto could kill him in an instant. So even though he was weakened, the older Viltrumite was still very much alive. I hope he pulls through, Debbie whispered as she hugged Mark. Me too. Naruto resisted the edge to scoff. As long as a Viltrumite was still breathing they would come back. In a day or two the bashed in face of Omniman would be back to how it was. The double doors opened and Cecil walked in. Doctors say he'll pull through, he said to the family before turning to Naruto. I need you in the hall. With that the man left and Naruto followed him. We're done with investigating the body, the boys in the lab did their magic and we have all we need, Cecil said as Naruto nodded. Thank you, the Amazons will be happy to bury her in her homeland, Naruto said. So I take it they've been informed of her passing? Yes. Am I going to be expecting angry warrior woman invading my cities? Cecil asked as he gestured for Naruto to follow as they began walking. Diana assured me that won't happen, Naruto said as Cecil hummed. I see, the man muttered. Now about the new guardians. What about them? Naruto asked. Cecil had deliberately given him an out if he wished to take one. A while back, before all this, the guardians were having talks about inviting you to join. Once you reach 19. But a lot's changed lately, and we all have to do our duty. You're now the leader of the new guardians of the globe, congratulations kid. Cecil said with a small smile. We'll contact you with details once your team is picked. For now, get some rest. Naruto nodded and watched silently as Cecil left. Naruto landed in front of the apartment that Starfire owned. Her work as a hero, model paid very well. But she wasn't the only person who lived here. Just as he was about to knock, the door opened, revealing Raven. I can feel your grief from the other side of the city, come on in. She said softly. Naruto floated into the house and took a seat on the living room couch. Starfire's not home so I'm ordering a pizza. Fine with me, Naruto said as he stared at the TV. Raven looked at the blonde with a frown before she. Raven quickly threw herself on the couch, and kicked up her feet on Naruto's lap. So. Dot you spoke with Diana? She asked as she felt him stiffen. I have. Naruto said slowly. And. Raven raised an eyebrow at his reluctance to say more. What was her reaction? She didn't react, she just asked me if I knew who did it, Naruto said as he leaned back into the couch. So do you. Do I what? Know who did it? I don't, no one does. It looks like he got away with it. Naruto said as Raven narrowed her eyes at him. Hey. Give me a foot rub, Raven said as she wiggled her toes. No, you know feet freak me out, Naruto said in disgust, only to get a blank look from the girl. I've seen you kiss Cory's ankles. That is totally different and you know it. Please explain how you won't give me a foot rub but you can lick a foot, Raven said with a smirk. She was wearing high heels. I wasn't licking the foot, I was licking the shoe, Naruto quickly defended. That's even worse. The heels were brand new, we're trying out something new, and how the hell do you know all this? It's not my fault you guys are loud, the half demon shrugged. So all I have to do to get a foot rub is have sex with you, I guess I can do that. I don't have a thing for feet, Cory and I were just trying out something new, Naruto said as he rubbed his face. You're getting some sick pleasure out of my misery aren't you? Well I am half demon, Raven said with a smile. 
Plus it helps you're no longer this walking grief rage monster. Yeah, thanks Raven. Naruto said as he looked at the girl with a small smile. Anytime, Raven said. Before she put her foot right in his face. Seriously though, I need a foot rub. It was past midnight as Naruto opened Kori's laptop and signed into his email. Earlier that day, Naruto had requested pictures and video of the Guardian's bodies. Cecil looked at him with a frown before he nodded and said he would send them later that day. Opening his mail and downloading the attachments, the first picture he brought up was of his father, the man was covered in bruises and cuts. Wounds that should have been fetal. Naruto zoomed in on his father's face, where there was a large red bruise on his temple. The blonde instinctively touched his temple. Flashback. Starfire with a mighty roar, punched him in the gut so hard he hunched over in pain. Blood fell from his mouth and stained the white floor of Antarctica. Before he could follow up he was hit in the side of the head with mace so hard his eye almost popped out. The blonde Viltrumite felt his sight blur as he lost his balance and fell to his knees. A blow to the temple always puts Am right to sleep. Yes it is quite effective for most humanoid species. Was it a bad idea to ask Starfire and Holly to team up with him and go all out? Yes, yes it was. 1v1 he was beating them into the ground, but 2v1? Yeah he was taking this L. Oh look at that, he's healing up. Then we must quickly beat him to the ground. End flashback Naruto couldn't help but smile sadly. While that was way back then, he doubted if they could beat him now. I guess we'll never know, he muttered before he zoomed into the chest. Where a wound that looked like the worst friction burn someone could get. Naruto closed his eyes as a mental simulation began to play out in his head. The base of the Guardians formed as the Guardians, Omni Man and a pure black figure materialized. The Guardians rushed in first, Red Rush and Omni Man being the fastest covered the distance first. The figure dodged a clothesline from Red Rush before blocking a punch from Omni Man. He then countered with a rush of punches to Omni Man's chest while Omni Man just stood there. No, that didn't make any sense. No. The figure grabbed Red Rush by the head while, while Omni Man just stood there. No, that's not it. The figure moved, a black blur as he blitzed forward. He first punched Omni Man in the chest. No forensics says Red Rush was the first to go. The figure grabs Holly's war mace first. The figure kills Dark Wing by slamming him first face into the ground. Immortal's head gets chopped off Aquarus's head was bashed in by a mace. Martian man's brain was ripped out Green Ghost's face had a fist-sized hole in it. Naruto let out a frustrated grunt as he tried to run another simulation. Each one not adding up. The figure wasn't insanely fast so he could blitz everyone, there was definitely a struggle. But every simulation didn't make sense because of his father. The man was just too strong for him to get the beating he got with all the guardians present. Unless grabbing the bridge of his nose in frustration, Naruto opened his eyes, took a breath and closed them. The simulation began and this time one of the victims of the attack was missing, and the black figure from before was different now. The figure's blue eyes stared down the guardians with an intense determination. Hours later, Naruto felt warm slender arms wrap around his shoulders. Beloved, you destroyed my computer. Naruto blinked as he looked down at the two large pieces in his hands that used to be Kori's PC. My bad. Naruto said as Kori gave him a kiss on the cheek. You should get ready for school, she said as Naruto grunted, it will help keep you distracted. And then you should go for work, I've taken the day off, Naruto could practically hear the smile in her voice. I don't feel like going, I don't know what's at school, but lately you've been smiling a lot. Kori said. Whatever it is, might keep you whole. Plus your brother needs you. I guess I can go. Naruto muttered as Kori stood up straight and began massaging his shoulders. Oh that feels nice. You've been seated here for eight hours straight, Kori said, smiling at the groan that Naruto released. Running battle simulations in your head. I remember when I used to do that. Just trying to find some closure, Naruto said. Now keep working those magic hands of yours. Yes sir, Kori said with a chuckle. I recently bought these nice high heels. Maybe next week when I come back from Paris you can help me break them in. Naruto's eyes instantly widened. For real? Hey you. Naruto closed his locker and turned to see Eve smiling at him. Hey, try as he might, the blonde couldn't muster the energy to much her enthusiasm. Wow someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed, 
Eve chuckled as Naruto gave a small smile. Eve noticed this and her eyes narrowed. Okay what's wrong? Nothing, just didn't get enough sleep is all. Naruto said before adjusting the strap on his backpack. We should head to class, the blonde quickly walked off with a suspicious Eve slowly following him. As the day went on, Naruto couldn't help but twitch at the intense look Eve was giving him. Throughout class, she just stared right at him. The teacher didn't even call her out. Could you please stop, Naruto muttered as he drank a sip of water. The two were currently at lunch with Eve seated opposite to Naruto still giving him the death stare. Stop what? That? What's that? Okay fine I give, Naruto said with a sigh. I, someone close to me died yesterday. Eve's eyes widened. Shit I didn't know I'm so sorry. No it's fine. I kinda feel like something finally got off my chest. Naruto said with a sad smile as Eve quickly got up and came to sit right next to him. Anything you need, I'm here for you. The redhead said as she grabbed his hand. Thanks, Naruto said as Eve leaned into him. Rex Sloan stared at his phone with a deep frown. His girlfriend, Eve, had stood him up again. Lately she's been acting differently. Last time he had asked her out she said something had unexpectedly come up. How a guy friend had dragged her to a book signing thing. Eve later came back feeling exhausted, but extremely happy. And now this. Hey is Eve coming for training? Rex turned and saw Kate doing stretches in nothing but a white vest and tight purple yoga pants. Damn she had a nice ass. No, she said a thing came up. Rex replied. Oh, it seems that something always comes up with her lately. Kate said as she bent down to touch her toes, showing off that perfect ass of hers. Yeah, Rex said as he stared at that ass in a trance-like state. Lake Santitla, North Carolina Eve looked on as Naruto Kazali picked a rock and skipped it. The rock crossed the entire lake before it crashed into a little island before sinking the island. How is that even possible? She couldn't help but ask. Don't give me that, Naruto scoffed. Can't you manipulate matter on an atomic level? Adam Eve? Yes I can, that can be explained. Sinking an island with a rock is just dumb, Eve said blankly. If I went up to space with a bag of marshmallows and threw a marshmallow at the speed of light, if I aimed it at New York, everyone would die. Naruto said with a chuckle. I call bull. You can look it up if you want, Naruto said with a shrug as he picked another rock and skipped it. Eve ignored the sight of Naruto bending down, because she had a boyfriend and quickly brought out her phone. Eve had brought Naruto here to help him with his loss. Nature usually helped her when she was feeling down and she was happy that Naruto seemed to enjoy the beauty of Mother Nature. Though she could tell he still wasn't himself, that's okay. Just one step at a time. What? No way. Eve gasped as she looked at her phone in shock. Apparently the marshmallow thing was possible. Told you. A smug Naruto said as he threw another stone. The strength behind the throw made a small shockwave as it skipped the entire lake. Whatever, Eve said with a roll of her eyes. How about we go for some pizza in Italy? Suddenly, Naruto's phone rang and hers followed a second later. Looking at the large TT logo on the collar id, Eve quickly answered. Hey, robot I can't really make it to an alien inversion. Get to headquarters as soon as possible. Eve's eyes widened before she turned to Naruto. Their eyes met before they both nodded. Eve's power showered her in a glow of pink as her clothes were changed into her hero costume. She did a spin before turning to Naruto with her hands on her hips and a smirk on her lips. Beat that. Naruto raised an eyebrow before he flexed and his clothes literally exploded. Showing he wore his red and black suit underneath, the iconic S symbol displayed proudly on his chest. How the fuck is that even possible? Civilians. Protect all the civilians. Cassie Cage yelled as she fired her twin pistols at the green-skinned piss of shits. She was team leader of a few special forces agents, her mother was somewhere at the front lines while she was here protecting people. An alien invasion of all things. Her mother was too busy preparing her and her team for Outworld only for this shit to happen. It would have been funny if not for the number of people who died at the hands of these bastards. Green-skinned humanoid aliens, decked out in high-tech Amor and armed with laser rifles. The lasers tore through the armor of her teammates like a hot knife through butter. No cover was safe because a fucking laser would just shoot right through it. The only way to not get shot is by shooting them before they shoot you. Not looking good here Cass, next to Cassie was her best friend, Jackie Briggs. Damn it we don't have an opening. 
Cassie cursed as she ducked behind a flaming vehicle. Ah Cass, I don't think he's okay, Jackie called out as she pointed. Cassie followed her finger before she spotted one of the heroes holding on to a mangled body of an elderly woman. Ah fuck me. The cape in blue and yellow was one of their heavy hitters, the guy was so strong he took down three of the bastards with a single punch. And now it looked like he had, frozen up. Shit. Their heavy hitter was out of it. Just where the fuck were the Guardians and Omni-Man? Okay. I'll go try to snap him out of it while you cover Cassie stopped as another cape dressed in red and black landed next to the kneeling hero. The cape in red put a hand on the other cape's shoulder and said something Cassie couldn't hear. The cape in blue quickly vanished in a blur of speed along with the body he had been holding. Holy shit it's Superman. Jackie said in awe and as the cape floated up. He now stood above them all, an aura of dominance about him. Maybe it was just her, as he glared at the green aliens. The fighting seemed to stop as everyone looked up at him, the iconic SA beacon of hope to the earthlings. In vendors, his voice was deathly calm but it was heard by everyone below. Leave my planet, before. The aliens completely ignored him and began firing at him. The lasers just harmlessly bounced off his body. Final warning, stand down, he said, but all he got was lasers to his face. Okay then. Red eyes glowed before twin beams of pure red energy shot out of his eyes. The beams seemed to twist and turn as they vaporized the aliens upon contact. Cassie could hear the screams of horror from the aliens as the lasers cut them down like a hot knife through butter. Cassie whispered as all alien guns aimed at one man. Suddenly, he vanished and appeared right in the middle of an alien platoon. One punch and almost ten aliens were reduced to blood smears on the road. Huh, so they bleed red. Good to know. Give them hell, Naruto. Cassie called out as Naruto took to the sky with a sonic boom. The force sent invaders flying left and right, some even outright exploded in a shower of blood and gore. Naruto Superman then dived back. His body slammed into another platoon. Killing dozens of them. His body was like a fucking mower and there were grass. Their bodies were cut down as he just flew through them at such high speeds. Their bodies are being torn apart and broken. Suddenly, the cannons atop the tanks of the invaders glowed ominously as they came to life. Cassie's eyes widened in horror. Surely they wouldn't take out that many of their own, right? The cannons fired. Bolts of pure plasma energy struck right where Superman was mercilessly killing invaders. The cannons had struck true as multiple large explosions killed off dozens upon dozens of the invaders. Cage. You and Briggs get out of there, you're too close. Cassie heard her mother say from her earpiece before she nodded and grabbed Jackie's arm. We gotta move, Cassie said as her friend nodded. Please tell me you can control your super speed. Cassie just gave her friend a smirk as her body glowed green. Of course I can use it, now let's go. Okay whoosh Cassie managed to find a safe spot, right next to Teen Team before her power gave out and she tripped and fell. I thought you knew how to control it. Jackie yelled out, she had landed face first with her butt sticking up. I said I can use it not control it, Cassie said before taking out her phone and taking a pic of her friend's ass. Come on, we still have a fight going on. Suddenly, a loud roar tore through the battlefield. Cassie turned to the source and her eyes widened at the figure of Superman. The top part of his suit was torn off, showing off his slightly burnt chest. The source of the inhuman roar was Superman himself before he dived for the nearest invaders. Damn. I wonder what it looks like from the other side. Cassie muttered as she watched Superman grab an invader and with unbelievable aim, chucked him at one of the cannons and plugged it. Demon. Monster. The general heard his army whimper as the human demon cut them down. A single punch from it would blow off the torso of any flaxen who happened to be nearby. Some tried to run but they could not escape, it was just too fast and too strong. The demon's eyes glowed red before it fired off beams of energy that destroyed a nearby tank. Their rifles didn't seem to work and only the tanks could do damage. The general ordered his army to protect the tanks at all costs. Suddenly, the wound in his eye closed and he felt himself grow weak. Their time was up. Hundreds of rapidly aging flaxens raced for the portals. The demon wouldn't let them. Get back here. Eve flinched as Naruto, covered head to toe in blood, roared out as he tried to go after them. She quickly flew to him, held out her hands as large pink constructs shot from her and wrapped around his form. That's enough. Eve yelled, as she pulled him back. 
Let me go. Naruto growled as he tried to fly at the large semicircular portals of the fleeing invaders. I know you're hurting. Eve flinched as Naruto thrashed around a bit too hard, at this rate he was going to break free of her power. This wasn't the boy she had befriended, this monster wasn't her friend. But this isn't the way. Please stop, just stop. The world needs you, I need you. Naruto stopped thrashing around and fell to his knees. Please, Eve said as she floated over to him. Naruto's once black hair was now blonde and dirty with blood. I know you're hurting and I'm here for you. Eve knelt down and wrapped him in a hug. She felt his arms wrap around her waist as he began to silently sob into her shoulder. It's okay, I'm here. Guess we now know why she was so busy. Duplicate muttered as the rest of the teen team gathered. Robot said nothing while Rex Splode clenched his fist. What happened out there kid? Cecil asked as Naruto stood straight. I let my emotions take the best of me. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.